Welcome to the Adam Does Movies live show. I'm Adam. I don't think I've ever called it that before. What a, what a weird way to start. Anyway, it's going to be a fun one today. I got my buddy, my online friend who I've never actually talked to before, Sean Chandler. He's in the studio. We're going to be debating heavily. Well, hopefully, actually, we'll probably be in agreement on a lot of them. Our DCEU films, where we put them in a ranking list. Our thoughts on Blue Beetle coming out soon, if we think it's going to be a success, a failure, um, yeah, and just kind of the DCU going forward should be a fun time. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste any more of it. Let's bring him in. Sean, hello. Hey, hello. You know, that's I've never weird. met you before. <laughs> that's, that's what I was trying to think. Like, you've been seeing your videos for years, interacted over mm -hmm. the internet. We've even done a collaboration, but yeah. we shot it separate. But we've never actually spoken before, which is so weird and surreal with like internet buddies when that it's happens. It's really weird. Yeah. I feel like I kind of know you and we're friends from afar. We both have kids. We're both, you know, doing the dad thing and trying to make our, well, you, you do this full time. I still have an actual full time job. So, you know, you've, you've, you've made it to that next level, which, which is just awesome. Um, if you guys don't know Sean Chandler, he has a YouTube channel. He's been doing it for, for quite a while now. Um, about as long as I have, I think. Maybe maybe not as long, but that just makes seven years sense. for me. July okay. 2016 is my okay. supposed start date. Well, so you climbed you climbed much faster, which is just embarrassing for me. But good for you, I guess. Let me let me share this. Does really it help quick. if I put it? Say I put out a Jackie Chan fan web page in 1998. And so <laughs> in that case, it took me <laughs> over 20 years. Is it was That's it on? A, was it on GeoCities or Angel Fire or one of those? Members.aol.com. Wow. It's legitimately an AOL website. That's, that's amazing. Does it still exist? Because that's it's the thing. It's on the, it, the internet way back machine. You can still see the images of it and stuff like that. And it is, <laughs> it is just as awful as you'd think. There's Sean's Chandler. Go over there. Subscribe to him. It's, it's a pleasure having you on, man. I feel like it's been a long time coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how this goes. Uh, yeah. I was reading the chat and someone goes, oh, this should be interesting because there's such opposites because uh, Adam is so sarcastic and Sean has a halo around his head. It's like, well, that I, appreciate, <laughs> I think I appreciate that. But if you know me in real life, Adam's, you know, Adam's, I, such, I, an, Adam's such an asshole and Sean's such a great guy. Yeah. yeah, I've been sarcastic the whole time, Sean. Love your stuff. No, um, no I think it's going to be just fine. Uh, what, what was I going to say here? I see you have your Captain America TV and, yes. and your shirt. And I, of course, am showing the, showcasing the, the greatest of the DCEU offerings. This should be fun. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to get going? How do you want to, how do you want to start this? You want to jump right in? Yeah. I mean, I guess so. Let's go for it and see, see where things take us. Okay. Let's go on this wild journey together. I have, I kind of like in the final 11th hour uh, changed how I was going to do this format. Let me quickly share. But maybe, maybe if we sh oh. shared like general thoughts on the DCEU before we dive into it, just to give kind of a maybe a point of reference. It's like that would be because it's such a weird universe. Because yeah. like at, whenever I look at the movies, I have because I love DC characters so much. Um, I feel like I 
the universe and it, as a continuity, it's kind of terrible because it's all over the place and it's always <laughs> it's really fighting bad. with itself. But it, but like the individual films, I probably like too much. There's a bunch of movies that I would be like, these are pretty mediocre, crappy movies, but I just have a lot of fun with them because I like playing in the sure. DC toy box. But it like it doesn't make any sense how like these movies exist in the same universe, especially yeah. in light of Man of Steel and the 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 foundation of this universe was. David Goyer was writing The Dark Knight Rises, and he yeah. had an idea for a Superman movie. He went to Christopher Nolan, and he's like, if Superman arrived, it would be the biggest thing to ever happen. That's the foundation. Christopher Nolan's that's a cool idea. And then by the time you get to the second movie, they just throw that out entirely. Wonder Woman's been on the planet. There's metahumans <laughs> everywhere. And it's like, well, <laughs> well, not, well, not only that, Wonder Woman's been on the planet secretly. You know, she's yes. not actually interfering with mankind, which makes it really hard to do standalone Wonder Woman movies yeah. that are set in modern times. <laughs> right. And then they're saying the whole basis of her origin is, yeah, she hasn't done anything. So let's yeah. do two prequels as her standalone movies. <laughs> right, right. Where in one of them, she she ends Nomad's Land in World War One. Oh, my and God. And then in the second one, she's on a news broadcast to, like, save everyone, like... What? How does this continuity make any sense? I just went, so I've been doing a new thing on the channel uh, called roast videos. They're they're pretty long and they take a a good amount of work to do. And unfortunately, one of the things that's required is I have to watch these terrible films. So I just rewatched Wonder Woman 1984. It's two and a half hours long and it's just a complete shit show of a film. I love how she takes her tiara and uses it as a weapon to break the security cameras, even though they already recorded her. Like somehow that's stopping the footage from going to the, you know, the other equipment. Like, so so I, don't, I, don't think I've re- I don't think I've rewatched it since December 2020, in which case when it was like at the time, I was like, wow, I'm watching a superhero movie in a theater again. I never thought this would happen. And it's so hopeful. And then it's like one of those movies that as soon as you get away from the excitement of I'm actually watching a movie again and the world didn't end, yeah. you're like, wait a minute. No, we, we that movie made any sense. <laughs> I I took my daughter. Well, we're we're going so deep in the yeah, woods. Let's get let us get let us get to it. Yes, let's yes, yes. Sorry, right, sorry. Sean, I'm I'm sorry. Have you ever? I'm not sure if you've ever ranked a movie before. You might not even know how this works. Is that something yeah, you're comfortable so- doing? I, I had a blog prior to trying to my mini a- adventures. I had a blog and I did a couple rankings back in like 2013. I okay. think I ranked the uh, episodes of the fourth season of Arrested Development. Oh, my god. That's gosh. a real thing that I think I did. Oh, my God. Right? Fo- did that, you say the, the four seasons the fourth, you did? The fourth se- no, the fourth season Oh, episodes, you did episodes? Oh, my God. Of the fourth season, the Netflix season. Are they all As, just so, in last? Are they all like ranked 11 or 12? I don't remember like one of those things. It was like, oh yeah, I did that, didn't I? That was the Are thing you... that I I actually was the ranking guy before I started my YouTube channel. I was doing the stupid stuff. You're so just, as it turns out, you're just yelling into into the ether. No one's listening at that point, but you're doing it for you. You know, if if, if, if you ever uh, seen the the video, um, it's it's on the TV show Life Is Short, where Liam Neeson. It goes in to be inter- like interviewed by Ricky Jarvis. And- oh yeah, yeah, yeah! That show was hilarious. Yeah, the kind so of parody can- style mm-hmm. interviews. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so he goes in, and uh, it's Liam Neeson walks in, and he goes, "I made a list. Uh, you seen this list that I made? I love making lists. I think that's why Steven Spielberg cast me in Schindler's List." Ricky Jarvis <laughs> starts laughing, and he's like, "Why are you laughing?" He's like, "What? I thought that was a joke. You were like, no, no." As an actor, you draw on things, and I drew on that. That's me, apparently. I'm the yeah. guy that just loves making lists. Just you're all Lee, well, you're, making lists. you're not only a list guy; you're also comparing yourself to Liam Neeson, which is pretty <laughs> pretty impressive to do. I, I applaud. And you for I that. named my child Liam. So oh. <sighs> I named my son Connor uh, off of John Connor. So we're kind of we're nice. kind of in the same ballpark there. Nice. Uh, the last right. name, unrelated. I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to do middle middle name uh, Drake for Uncharted. Uh, Drake's mm-hmm. fortune, but my wife put the kibosh out of spite. She made me name him Blake. I don't think she gives a shit about the name Blake. <laughs> she just didn't want me to have it. She didn't want to give me the W at the yeah. end of the day. 
that's messed up. I know it is. And Arrested Development first three seasons are fantastic. So mm. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, let's yeah. let's get to this. Let's get the show on the road. That's why I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about the Netflix episodes. It was not. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, that sounded like Ron Howard doing the narration. It was not. <laughs> okay, how do I share this? Let's see. Share this. Bring it up. Do stuff. Get us in here somehow. Where are we at? Whoa. Where are we oh. at? There we are. Oh, there we, there it We're is. in That's the Matrix, good. and here it is. Okay, so this isn't a ranking. Calm down. Calm <sighs> down. This isn't the ranking. This is just the order of release date uh, when these hit theaters. This isn't, like, chronologically based on the characters. Otherwise, I think, what, Wonder Woman would be number one, maybe? I assume that's as far back. It's hard to, it's hard to understand. But, Sean... We're going yes. to start with Man of Steel. You you mentioned it. David S. Goyer, kind of a, yes. a very hit and miss writer. And he did try mm -hmm. his hand at directing at least yes. one movie I saw. And it was atrocious. I think it was called Invisible. Is that is that mm -hmm. the right name? Mm -hmm. He was a he was a he was dead. And then he was like haunting his girlfriend. Really, really awful film. OK, let's talk. Man yeah. Of Steel. And he did Blade Trinity. So that's oh. unfortunate. He did. Oh, yeah, that's right. He did direct Blade mm -hmm. Trinity. Yeah. What a miserable film. Yeah. He had a really bad track record as a director. That's unfortunate. But you know what's not unfortunate? Man of Steel. I know, I know it's hit and miss for people. A lot of people either seem to love this or hate it. I'm more on the love side. Mm -hmm. I definitely can recognize the problems with it. I do. I love, listen, I love Kevin Costner. Every mm -hmm. man, blue collar, salt of the earth, Kevin Costner. But I did not like the character arc of him dying in the tornado. I, I thought that would be just so freaking dumb. Like, no, no, you're not going to save me from this. I'm going to die on this hill. It was so, and the message that he was trying to teach his son was terrible too. So it was just kind of a, a messy, uh, but whatever. O outside of that, I, I do really like the visuals. People get mad because, you know, Superman smashing through buildings, presumably killing tens of thousands of people fighting Zod. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not, he's not Superman yet. The movie's called man it's, of steel. It's, it's day one. He's still figuring one. it out. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Oops. I accidentally destroyed a skyscraper, but I yeah, also sorry, saved. I'm not, yeah. I'm I, not thinking I, on my feet real quick. I got another super powered alien fight in me, you know? Right. He, he's battling a bunch of Kryptonians right. and he's trying to save billions of people. Sure. A couple thousand are going to die in the process. Yeah. So I, I'm not a big fan of this movie. Um, I, when I first watched it, I didn't know what to make of it. Like went to go see it. Actually, it was a youth pastor at the time. We were on a trip, and I was like, um, new Superman movie's coming out. Senior sneak tonight. Literally <laughs> took the whole, all the seniors at midnight because I wanted to go see it. Oh. So we went to go see it uh, midnight. And That's I was, not a and, short movie either. You guys it, can not, get back and, to like 3.30. Mm -hmm, and this yeah. like we were in at camp. So yeah. camp is not next to the movie well that, that's what i'm saying you probably had a yeah. good half hour drive or so oh yeah oh yeah oh, this okay. is like camp in the middle of nowhere texas driving into new Braunfels, texas <laughs> watch the movie long movie and then driving back um so i, I was very very responsible and, but you know i grew up on christopher reeve superman movies i just adored yeah. those movies growing up those are that's those are the ones that we, we had growing up that and batman 89 and so this is so different that it took me a couple of viewings to like evaluate the movie on its own terms and not just mm -hmm, be like, mm -hmm. that's different. And then once I kind of bought into it and the vibe that they were going for and that they were intentionally trying to do something different, uh, I just really dug it. The score, fantastic. Yeah. Wildly different from the John Williams score, equally iconic in its own way. Um, and, you know, Zack Snyder is one of those directors that, um, swings for the fences he's always trying to do something and sometimes it's awful sometimes it's awesome but he actually has a distinct voice and in particular more and more that we get just these generic as can be superhero movies when you watch one that has a distinct style you're like i i like this i dig this i appreciate this yeah it uh I was worried going in because it kind of had, you know, the Dark Knight leading up to this, that they yeah. were just going to Dark Knight Superman, make mm -hmm. it really, really, you know, down to earth and grounded and serious. And um, thankfully, that's not what they did. It's definitely a lot more somber, a lot less mm -hmm. hopeful than a lot of people probably wanted. What do you mean? Is he's, the symbol on his chest means hope. It's a hope. 
<laughs> it's right there. It's, it's, it's right in the there. trailer. They marketed it that That's way. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I don't I, I don't really have any issues with this outside of um the Costner stuff. And I do think Amy Adams is maybe not the best Lois Lane, but it's not because of Amy. It's because I just don't think they writ her uh writ her. Ritter's the word now. They they didn't write her really in line with how I picture Lois Lane acting. Yeah. Well, it's it's also a little bit tricky because it's such a it's a story told in such a specific moment in time for them. Mm-hmm that puts them outside of the, their normal even interaction. So he's Clark Kent, but he's not really doing a lot of normal Clark Kent things. And yeah. so even her interactions with him are kind of, you know, she meets him in a spaceship. That's kind of weird. That's different. It's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so cinematography though, is just top of the line. Uh, I, I love the, just the personal shots of him touching down the, the debris going up into the air. Mm-hmm. The, those flying sequences are beautiful. I, I love the IHOP. I mean, I can't get enough of the IHOP setting. Very, very nicely done. <laughs> but just even coming off, like, off Superman Returns that was like, look, he's saving cats. Look, he's stopping yeah. bank robbers. But he he doesn't punch anyone in the face. And they gave us a movie that he, mm-hmm. he punches people in the face. And they had this, like, frantic energy to it yeah. that I, I just – there's a lot of details in it. Even, even like, the way that they did uh, the Christopher Maloney character, my mom – for 10 years straight, only watched Law and Order SVU. That was the only TV show she watched. So I've seen a lot of Law and Order SVU. Wow. That, and so then he appears in, in a Superman movie and he's written to be very unlikable. Like he's just the, uh, the abrasive military guy. Yeah. But they even find ways to use that in a sense of like, he's also committed to that. He like, he won't let like these Kryptonians that will obviously kill him. He'll still grab a knife and be like, yeah, but I'm going to yeah. hold a knife in front of you. And Snyder, he, yeah, Snyder did a good job with this one, and he didn't go full Snyder, which was nice. Like the guy didn't turn at the camera and wink at any point, and his eyes turned green, and and everybody's like, "What? What? What was that? What did you just do there?" And then Snyder just tips the hat and walks away. Uh, it kept it at least plausible for this one. It, it's yeah. later when things go a tad off the rails for me personally, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think I like this quite a bit. I ranked it. Where did I rank it? Number two. This is the second. This is my second favorite DCEU film. I have it at number two. Are you wow. serious? Wow. That's, wow. This is incredible. That's game. I, I don't think we need to go any further. Yeah. Our lists are identical at this <laughs> <Yes>. point. <laughs> we're batting 100%. <laughs> let's quit while we're ahead. Exactly. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back to the list. One, oh my God. Sean. I got these tabs all open. I don't know if I need yours up. I'm going to get rid of yours. I got these tabs open to share, and I almost just shared your full ranking list. Like a Whoa. complete idiot. That would have been Whoa. absolutely Whoa. devastating. It would have shut this whole thing down. Toot sweet. Remember yeah, that term? Toot everyone. Sweet. There we go. We have Batman. Oh, you know what? Side note, Sean, where can I find your ranking of all 10 seasons of uh, Law & Order SG-1? <laughs> I, the the show started I think in ninety nine, so I think they're on season twenty four. <laughs> is it S? Wait, did I say they're at SG one or is it SV1? SG one? That's Stargate. That's Stargate. This is, this is SVU. <laughs> oh, SVU. I combine the two. Wait, when am I going to get the Law and Order that, Stargate crossover film? We've all been wanting. Yeah, we've. Yeah, th- that would be fantastic. Oh my gosh, just all the just... SG SV just combine them together. But it, there was a point in time where I had seen. Like every episode of the first fifteen seasons of Law and Order. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's and, every ep- every I've episode. Never seen a exact, one. It, they're all the same. Yeah, it's the for, same yeah. exact formula. It's Someone's like House. Been raped or murdered. It's just. It's, it's like House. It's it's always like lupus or something. Every time I'm just yelling, like whatever House says, it is. It is. Stop beating around the bush for yeah. forty five minutes. Okay, I now I can't get Stargate uh, Law and Order out of my head. I think that would be incredible. Okay, we have here we have Batman v Super. I cannot believe Batman v Superman is the second movie in the DCEU. This is nuts. Yeah. What and every time you, you, you rethink through like the universe and you go, wait a minute, they really did that. They really That's just insane. went straight to it. Um and and the movie feels like that. If you it like the ideas for movies in here, there's this very obvious like the follow-up to Man of Steel. How yeah. is the world reacting to the events of Man of Steel? 
and they do these montages of the news and these continue, you know, deconstruction of superheroes and <laughs> the people that hail him as a god and those that criticize <laughs> Jesus him for not symbolism. Being, just, just, like <laughs> so over like and then you have that. And then you have Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Which is its own could that's, be its own thing. Yeah, of course. And then it's also like Dawn of Justice. Like, mm-hmm. to, to throw that in there. And so we're in the movie. They're preparing for this big <laughs> battle. Yeah. And then Batman checks his email or something. And like, we're literally like, <laughs> that's the, the, the exactly music's what cre- crescendoing. And he checks his email and he starts watching YouTube videos of The Flash. <laughs> and that's the moment that I completely am out of this film. I was on board for all the all the angsty, emo, yeah. dark crap going on. I was even fine with, ah, oh, haha, I love bringing people together. Like Lex <laughs> Luthor being just over the top. But I tell this story, I have to tell, it's really quick. But I saw this movie in theaters with a bunch of people my brother was with. And when Bruce went down to his computer to, to check his portfolio <laughs> and his stocks and bonds, uh, my brother gets up to go pee because he's like, this is going to be boring. I'm going to run and go pee quick. And instantly it does the jump cut to the post-apocalyptic doomsday scenario, <laughs> evil Superman. So my brother comes back. Guys can go pee very fast and wash their hands. He comes back in like a minute. And it's just absolute chaos on the screen. There's there's bug demon creatures. Batman's got a fucking gun. Like he's in a duster. And Jake, my brother Jake turns to me. He's like, "What did I miss?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know." It, it was it was insane. And they don't explain it. Right. <laughs> and it's never going to get explained. It's now. Never explained. So then, like the Flash comes out of a portal. Like, yes. uh, she's the chosen she's one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on yeah i really like it too um, <laughs> have you seen the director's cut i uh you know what someone told me to see the director's cut and i'm like I, I always respond the same when people ask me to watch director's cuts i i turn and i say it so like the big one that used to be praised was daredevil and i mm-hmm. always turn and i say hey is the playground scene in there still where they're fighting <laughs> on the teeter-totter and they just get deflated and like we're done here we're done here. And that's yeah. it. I don't need more of this train wreck. I need less of it. Cut some yeah. of it out. So in the case of this movie, it very clearly, they wrote a movie that was intended to be 245, 250, three hours as the director's cut is. Eight hours, the, nine hours. The, 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 shot, shot in a four by three aspect ratio. <laughs> and and then the, the studio heads came in and said, no, that's too long. It has to be this short. And so then they started cutting pieces out to the point where it's like, you're not even explaining what's going on. You're cutting, yeah. but bet- like cutting out all the stuff about Clark Kent as a reporter, um, the connective tissue that makes the logic work for the motivations of oh what's going God. on. I have, I have seen the director's cut. I'm sorry. I have, because they had that whole subplot with um, Amy Adams, Lois Lane. She's like tracking the bullet. Yeah. Right? There's like this whole thing. And yeah, I don't, I still don't care anymore about it, right. but I know what so- you're saying. So it makes more sense. It's still yeah. convoluted. It's still very clearly um, they're trying to do too much. I love a lot of this movie. I just don't think it works. Well, I, I think it overall, because I respect the ambition of the film, I like that it's actually trying to do something. It's fun to just see all these characters on screen together. You know, the big epic finale, Snyder's good at spectacle. And there's all these kind of shots that are pulled from the comic. So it works sure. well enough for me, but it, it's like, I don't know if that's your actual rating, like three out of five. Like, I think that's that's pretty fair to say that there's there's a lot of merit here. It's yeah. bloated. There's too much. They, they it feels very much compromised by studio heads saying like, no, 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 you got to do this and you got to do this and you got to do this. And so then all of a sudden, Batman's checking his email and watching <laughs> YouTube videos right before the finale. Lex Luthor took the time to make custom icons, icons for, each of for the their characters. for their folders. Yeah, yeah it was really like I don't even know what program is using to do that. It's impressive. I want to do that. I, I like foldering <laughs> things. I want to. I want to be able to make like emblems and insignias on my stuff. Uh, the other thing is Wonder Woman felt absolutely forced into this film. Right. She comes out of nowhere, shot out of a cannon at the end of the film. Right. And, and even, what is it? Doomsday? Who's the bad, bad guy? Who's the giant? Yeah, it's it's Doomsday. It's, okay. it's they turn yeah. zod into yeah doomsday is the equivalent to it's, what it's, in, it's incredible how a good chunk of these warner brothers movies 
totally messed with the scripts and in the editing department. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I would say a good five movies on this list would have been a lot better, like you said, if they just gave him full creative control. Mm-hmm. Regardless if it's better for everyone remains to be seen, but it's going to at least pull in. It, it's kind of like when The Last Jedi came out and it pissed off half the fan base or yeah. more, like myself. And instead of just going all in on the new direction right. Ryan Johnson took it, which they should have done, they backtracked and tried to like double down mm-hmm. and pull back the other fans. But instead, you just lost all of everybody. Them. Yeah. yeah, everybody. Nobody and, likes it anymore. Yeah, right. And that's how I feel like this whole Snyderverse kind of turned out. It just right. like, nobody's winning now. They still they still try to reference his stuff. Wonder Woman's constantly getting dragged out for a cameo. Yeah, men, you know, in the Flash, they had all these tips to Zod and Man of mm-hmm. Steel, and the fans that the fans that like Snyder hate this crap. They don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> yeah. They just they don't. So stop doing it. Like just yeah. just burn the bridge and walk away. And I guess that's kind of what they're doing coming up. Yeah, they don't want you treating Zack Snyder as an Easter egg. They they want <laughs> exactly. to, they want to worship him. They don't yeah. want you to be like, hey hey look, see. They don't want yes. that stuff. Yeah, they want they want full Snyder or nothing at all. Yeah, I put this film, put it number nine out of uh, a possible 14. So kind of in the middle. I didn't have it at nine. I had it at eight. We are wow. Sp- thus far surprised. I'm sure very soon we'll like wow. go off in very different directions. But right do you, now. Did you we're... rank your movies? I mean, I'm sorry. Did you did you rate your movies? Did you give them stars or anything? Or uh, no, no, okay. I don't. I don't have any. Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. And okay, with, especially with one like this, where most of the movies I watched them during my channel, so I did my official review, and then sure. I have my new, my current opinion versus the opinion I had when I first reviewed it. Um, so I'm just trying to gauge messy. where you're at as far as enjoyment. But it sounds like you like you like Batman v Superman. If if were you on Rotten Tomatoes at the time? Did you give this a fresh or a raw? I, I was you... I was not. I do not officially have a score for yeah, this one on the okay. Rotten Tomatoes. I, I would go fresh. You I would it would be it, okay. it would be a mixed fresh. It would be like like that kind of B minus kind of ter- mixed ter- berry, <laughs> a mixed fresh, a mixed yeah. berry crunch, sort of a I, yeah. I, you know, I had a question for you on that because I, I do the Rotten Tomatoes too, but um have you ever not put up a, a fresher rotten based solely on your own? Like, I can't decide if I want it to be fresh. I don't want to put myself out there on it because I don't feel like I can properly determine this. Have you done that or do you just do it no matter what? Um, there's a lot of times I wait on them or okay. I, yeah, there's, if I'm, there's, cause it's so tricky. Cause if those of you that don't, don't know, you have to go fresh or rotten. It's yeah. one or the other. There's yeah. no middle ground. It's not based off your score. It's based off you pick, click fresh or you click rotten. And when you're in that kind of like mm, zone, zone. Yeah. It, it's it's frustrating. And there's movies where you respect the ambition, but maybe didn't fully fulfill it. And then there's movies that like, yeah, that was perfectly mediocre. It yeah. wasn't particularly ambitious, but it was fun enough at its mediocrity. Right. And so you, those are two very different feelings or so it's they're really weird ways that yeah. you can mean what you mean by them so i i sometimes i've waited a while to like see how do i feel about it after i've i've gotten the reaction from people and right sat in it heard their heard their criticisms heard the praises like where do i well then you I, got the then you got the micro game too because if you wait long enough then you see what that score is populating at and sometimes mm-hmm. something that's mediocre is pushing 90 percent fresh mm-hmm. and then you're thinking well uh, it's not 90% like it's not that great like the majority shouldn't think this movie because mm-hmm. when you present that to someone and, and they see 90% fresh they instantly mm-hmm. think that means this is a really really good movie mm-hmm. but it could mean a lot of people thought it was just a little bit better than average and mm-hmm. that puts it up there so yeah it's I was just curious so yeah we're, we're kind it's of it's a tricky that. game and then yes. even like then you like do I want to use my influence to try and get that right and if I yeah. do that with depending on certain audiences, if you're the one that does that, you just put a target on yourself and you get all these angry people coming at you like, what did, what did I do? I, all I did was didn't did you expect me to like the My Little Pony movie? Like, did you think I was the target audience? <laughs> well, that's the other big thing, too, because uh, like Fast 10, for instance, came out not that long ago. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just just terrible. Um, but obviously there's 10 of these. They have a huge Mm built-in audience. 
So it's like, how much do you separate yourself at this point with these massive franchises? Like, is it giving the fans what they want from these? Mm -hmm. Do you take yourself out of it at the, at some certain point? Um, and that's, that's kind of where I struggle with how to even, because everything's a product now, it kind of is depressing in a sense. Uh, no. So yeah, I, I just, I struggle with that. Sucks to be a movie fan, I guess. Um, these, okay, here we go. We have uh, Critical Darling. Yes. Suicide Squad. This movie does one thing incredibly well. Okay. Margot Robbie. Yes. That outfit is <laughs> the greatest gift to men and some women uh, yeah. everywhere. Uh, I, Very I, popular at Comic Cons and Halloween for adults. Yeah. Right? A lot of um, a lot of girls with daddy issues have celebrated mm -hmm. this wardrobe uh, plenty of times, and I appreciate it. It's popular on Fortnite too as a skin for a bit. That was neat. You know, Sean. Uh, full disclosure: I've only bought one skin on Fortnite in my life, and it hmm. was the Harley Quinn skin. <laughs> <laughs> so now I know who's running around shooting me. As, as Harley Quinn, it's, it's, so, it's so sad. It's so sad. But that's where I'm at in life. Okay, happily married since high school. Yes. Okay, uh, well, high, I didn't get married in high school, but I met my wife. It's like, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, I got, I tied the knot at, you know, 15. No, I've just been with my wife a very long time. Suicide Squad 2016, directed by David Ayer. This is another one where he's, what are we, six, seven years out? He's still clamoring mm -hmm. for that Snyder Cut yes. type of situation. It seems like there's support. I like David Ayer. He's done some good stuff. He also did that terrible Will Smith fairy tale movie <laughs> on Netflix. I don't There was supposed to be a sequel. I don't know what happened. Yeah. It was awful. Most Netflix movies are though. Um I like him though. He, he did he did End of Watch, which was a solid mm -hmm. gritty police drama. He's done some other good stuff, but you could tell this is not his movie. <laughs> it's right. Such a shit show. Right. And expect like right out of the gate there was yeah. so many reports of he had six weeks to write the script that before the movie came out, they're like, they had the trailer company come in to re-edit the movie. Yeah. Like, the, what? What? And, and especially like, if you know, if you've seen an interview with David Ayer, yeah. if you've seen the movies that he makes, they have a hard edge. This is not like this soft pushover guy. Look, I mean, just look at the movie, this, his Suicide Squad. It's bleak. It's dark. This is not this softy that's like casually like, oh, sure, guys. Um, If you think the guys that cut the trailer can make a better movie, let me just step right. It's, and it's exhausting. That movie is exhausting. I watched it yesterday for my roast. I had to watch Wonder Woman 84, Suicide Squad, and Just Justice League. <laughs> I watched two of them one nice. day. I, I mean... Suicide Squad, I, I, the title is perfect for how I felt when I was watching that film because it was so, it's so bad. It is so bad. I think there are 12 songs in the first 10 yeah. minutes of the movie. Well, and you can feel that they they re-edited the film. Yeah. That this was not the intro that he had. This was not the way these characters were supposed to be introduced. It's literally like, here's a character. Song introduces them. Yes. Here's a character, a different song. And the, the song is their character development. And, you're like, and the song what is, so, is this? It's so random, too. It's like whatever they had in the, the studio library that they could pull from. Oh, we got Bohemian Rhapsody. Pull it in. We got, uh, uh, there's like some song by uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. <laughs> <laughs> War has a song on there. It's just, it's a disaster. And then Eminem. The most egregious one of all. Eminem comes on and the editor just straight cuts halfway through a verse of a song. It doesn't even bother blending it. It just cuts and then goes to the next part because they had to get to that, you know, crescendo yeah. of the song. Sad, sad stuff. But, Amanda yeah, he... Waller. Amanda Waller, uh, I think three minutes into the movie, starts narrating out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> this is her film. She's yeah. the protagonist. They did the same thing at the end of Justice League with um, Lois Lane. She starts yeah. narrating the ending. Yeah. These are their these are their stories. What are we doing? Right, right. and it's and it's in both cases it's the same thing. Studio mandates cuts, re-edit the movie. So to fill in the gaps, you have to have someone tell you what's happening and explain yeah. everything to you, rather than actually tell a story. 
and just utter disasters like screenwriting storytelling filmmaking 101 stuff here it's, and it's they really... get it so wrong and so it's it's fo- following david ayer it's it's fun because every month there's some new thing where he's like actually in my movie this <laughs> actually i'm hoping someday we can do this actually and every single month he, he does it and he, you feel bad for the guy it's, and sad. The same t- it's, it's sad yeah and I, you don't it, you imagine you you dedicated two, three years of your life to make something. And then yeah. the thing that they put out there is the equivalent of someone taking your movie and drawing like a smiley face on it and then putting a crappy music. He, like he literally said, like my movie did not have any songs in it. It was all I score. Believe, I, believe I had a that. score. I had I a score. That. And then they, the, the movie is so defined by that vibe of music, of pop yeah. songs and rock songs. And you go, what? Yikes. Because, that, that's painful. Do you remember the logic behind this change? Was it because Deadpool came out not that long before yeah, this so, and they wanted so, to colorize it? And I think they even added a CG unicorn in at one point with Boomerang's jacket because that was a callback to Deadpool's movie. Yeah. So that's what basically that's basically what David Ayer said is that it was a it was like three things all in a short window of time. Deadpool came out and it it just made bazillions of dollars. Yeah. Just so much money that Warner Brothers went, oh, people went lighthearted. People and then like Batman this v- now. Batman v Superman came out and it got, was too dark. And then yeah. the third one was in one of the, in the trailers for the movies, they put like ballroom blitz or something like that. So mm-hmm. pretty typical stuff for trailers to use songs in them. Yeah. But People liked that vibe, and so they went, let's make the movie more like that. Let's make it funnier like Deadpool. Let's make it not as dark as Batman v Superman. And so then they they like reshot the ending. They re-edited the entire film, and it's like it's barely coherent. Yeah. It it, it doesn't – like you're tracking along with what's happening is kind of difficult. It's really it, hard. I, I watched – like I said, I watched it. I took copious notes, and I was pausing every – freaking minute because they were just throwing line after line at you super quick and these were important things Mm -hmm. i still don't know how harley got the uh, chip in her head removed or deactivated they don't tell you in the film and that's like a big (laughs) that's kind of a big plot point to not have your head blown off yeah Uh, And, and and they um like you're you're watching it and they they don't tell you exactly what happened in the city and then they yeah. kind of tell you at a flashback later in the film. And mm. it, it's still really unclear exactly how everything unfolded. And the bad, bad guys are putties, but they're actually the people from the city. And it's just so... I do, I couldn't even gauge what the actual goal was for Enchantress. She, she says that humans don't worship them. They worship machines. So she says, I'm going to build them a machine. She does, which is essentially just a laser beam. I didn't even see a machine at all. Yeah. I don't know how she even built it. Is she a mechanic? What, what is she doing to, to make this shit? And then she just kind of starts doing like a pussycat, you know, don't yeah. you dance and profit. What was she trying to accomplish? She destroyed a satellite. <laughs> that was about it. She destroyed a satellite. <laughs> that was the goal. And, and her brother's in it too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But Big it's guy, like, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, her brother's in this. It's just, just like a total mess of a film. So yes. I don't think David Ayer's version of the film will be good. I just think no. it'll be better and more coherent. I agree um, with you on that. Yeah. And so I'm, I love to see things like that. I'd love to see it someday, but. Um, Do you think we will? I, I think the thing that made it the that made it most likely we won't see it is the release of the Snyder cut and the response of the Snyder bros. Yeah. I think that uh, if the response to that had been the the viewership that it got, plus people being like, "Hey, thanks, that was cool, that was cool," like, like you put like out a, a normal, <laughs> like a normal sane response. Right. Well, like the thing that, like, like that's my response to it. And then my buddy, right. buddy Rudy in San Antonio, um, I, I, you know, I got it early from press, so I invited him to come over, and so we got to see it a couple of days early. And I think to, uh, he's told me, like, on my deathbed, I will remember you for letting me see it two days early. Because he's so thankful. He's like, yeah. it's so cool we got this. Yeah, it was cool. It, but now, and, now I feel like at any given moment, there's going to be like a January 6th equivalent of these guys storming James Gunn's yeah, like, penthouse and right. springing him up because he's not releasing more Zack Snyder shit. Right. It, 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 like you go, uh, 
you guys, you, you you're ruining it. Yeah. All you had to do is be grateful, thankful, yeah. and it and you get more. Like you, you you don't get more by acting like terrorists. That like as soon right. as you got what you wanted, you're like, no, let's blow up the next building. <sighs> this is a burn it down. This is a real story. So um, because I'm middle aged, I, I course, yes. had a window a door to door window salesman came to my house, and we agreed to buy windows from a door to door window salesman. This okay. happened. So then okay. the guy, the adjuster comes over, walks, checks all the windows and sits down and, you know, they're, they're trying to sell you stuff. So, they're, you know, being friendly and charismatic and they ask me what I do. And so what do you do? YouTube is kind of an interesting job. So yeah. start talking. The guy goes, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Grace Randolph fan and I'm a big into the Snyder, the release, the Snyder cut. And so we ended up talking for like, like two hours, like two, mm. three hours at this guy mm. with my window salesman talking about the Snyder cut. And um, we we get two hours into this, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I was so so excited they released it. I'm like, I'm legitimately excited to talk about it. He goes, yeah, you know, I, I spent so much time like trying to get it released. I actually haven't oh, seen no. it yet. Oh no! <laughs> and, he, and he's like, you know, I haven't seen it yet. Like, and he says that I was like, that I think that perfectly embodies yeah the, the movement. It, it it like it's it is a like a cult yeah. movement in they a lot of care, ways. That, they don't even it, care about the product at this point. They just care yeah, about the the, the journey. movement, the, yeah. the victories, and yeah. and he's like, yeah, you know, I'd already read a lot of the behind the scenes. <laughs> I'd seen the artwork, and so you know, I didn't even rush to to watch it. I, and I don't know if he he ever did watch it. I don't know. Oh my god! And, and I heard that, and I was like, so you are. 10 times more invested in the movement and 10 mm. times, like 1000 times less interested in the movie than me. He's got like for seven me, Facebook pages. He's managing. Yeah. He's got a couple of Reddit forums, 4chan. They're all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And I, I thought like, that's the thing that I think will hold it back that as long as they're just like burning it, just uh, going crazy, trying to burn down James Gunn. Yeah, they're 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 online terrorists, and you can't give in to terrorists. And hopefully and, they hopefully they get distracted a little bit by Alita: Battle Angel Two. They can take a little bit of time on that one again, and those seem to be the two hills they die on. And, and to be perfectly clear, I would love to see it. I would love to Zack Snyder cut. Yeah. We'll get to that. Um, I I love Alita. Two. I want Alita Two. I like Alita. Like, I like Alita I, Battle. Yeah, like, but I think I, I, I think it's hilarious that these the, are the movies. These right, are the, the ones. The the, the uh, <laughs> movements behind them. <laughs> these are the ones that define a generation. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave on this note with Suicide Squad, Sean. Since I took a lot of notes, like I said, this is the full verbatim narration that Amanda Waller gives us that they felt the need to put in three minutes into the film. The world changed when Superman flew across the sky. Then it changed again when he didn't. 10 second pause. And that's why I'm here. That's it. That's the whole thing. And then she smiles at the camera and walks in to have a steak dinner with Hopper from Stranger Things and talk shop. And I'm it's pretty incredible. sure they put that in the trailer too. That was like a thing that, that they was, went. Yeah. They went, this is good. This yeah. is like. This hmm. is it. This, this is, is what we, we're going to, we're going to have a gigantic hit. And the, uh, actually, and they did the, as much as people have crapped on it since it came out, the movie was very profitable. Well, yeah. It, there, I mean, if, if we, if we, if we rated films based on profitability, then every, every Transformers film is an A plus plus, but yeah, true. I know, I know what you're I, saying. It did, it did incredibly well. I will say, you know, that's, what's funny is they <laughs> suicide squad made a stupid amount of money I think Man of Steel, or I'm sorry, BVS made a good amount of money too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yet the studio still just dropped them like a bad habit. Yeah. It's almost impressive that they didn't take what worked, even though it was terrible, and say, well, let's just do... They didn't do what Venom did and make right. another awful Venom movie. <laughs> or, you know, the, uh, hunt, whatever. what's the new one called? The Hunter, Craven, Craven, Craven Hunter. the Hunter. Craven yeah, the Hunter. Like, all these garbage shovelware films Sony's putting out, they're not learning a lesson. Their, ta their takeaway is we're making a lot of money off of these pretty mediocre to miserable experiences. So I give I give a little bit of props that at least they didn't just keep doing the now that's what yeah. I call music, you know, four <laughs> and five. All right. Uh, where did you put this on your ranking? I have it at number 13 next to last. Next to last. <clears throat> I have it at 12. 
Okay, um, so score. once again, we're, again, we're very, right, very close. Brother, brothers in arms, I guess, to the end. Let's go to Wonder Woman 2017. Little little trivia, a little fact for you. I took my daughter, <clears throat> Olivia, to this movie when it hit theaters. She, uh, I don't know how old she would, she would have been like nine at the time. And it didn't really hit me until we left the theater and saw how beaming she was with a smile on her face. Mm -hmm. And she turned to me and she was like, dad, I love that movie. I love Wonder Woman. I want to be like her. And it's, it was like an awesome dad moment. Yeah. But it was also, it just hit me like, okay, this really legitimately is one of the only big budget female action led superhero movies to ever grace mm -hmm. the big screen. Yeah. You've had like Electra and tank girl and Supergirl, but this was the real deal they put a lot of money into it they you know they got a good director they got a good well, they got a they got a pretty actress <laughs> i might say good but they they got an awesome score great effects and my daughter was just so right. infatuated it was great and so then yeah, my we, fast, we fast forward and Wonder Woman 1984 comes out a couple years later and my family gathers around the tv because it was released on hbo max mm -hmm. date fun and an hour and a half into the movie, my, Olivia gets up and she says, I don't like Wonder Woman anymore. And she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly discredited. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree yeah. with her. I, I really like Wonder Woman. Um, I think this is a, a great film. It feels in line with the Zack Snyder kind of look. Mm -hmm. And I know he mm -hmm. produced it. I know he mm -hmm. was very much hands on and kind of guiding this. If you ask the Snyder Bros, he basically made this movie. I'm <laughs> of course, not willing. Of course, I'm not willing to go that far. Uh, I think he probably helped with some of the action and and maybe you know some of the cinematography. You know, just like tips, mm -hmm. because James uh, James Cameron produced Alita. I don't I don't credit him for making Alita. I don't think anybody else does either. What do you think, Sean? What are your thoughts on this? I, I mean, I think it's um, so much better than. I thought a Wonder Woman movie could be just yeah. the certain characters are tough to translate. Mm -hmm. And the lady in the American flag swimsuit with a magic lasso flying around an invisible jet, like that's tough to crack the code. <laughs> like, how, to, how do you make that one feel quite right? And, you know, you can watch the seventies show and it's cheesy. And they tried to do a TV pilot 10 years ago, about five years before this movie came out. And it it's dreadful. Uh, it's, it's, I've, I've watched oh, it. On yeah, YouTube. I remember that. Yeah. And Pedro Pascal, who's in 84 yes. is in, it's in the, the pilot and Joss Whedon, um, you know, before being the nerd enemy number one, when he was, you know, the hero of nerds, uh, you know, he took a crack at wonder woman. He couldn't crack the code. So I, I didn't have high hopes for this one for a long time. Yeah. And, and they really managed to like find this great balance of, strength femininity serious but having humor that didn't mm -hmm. cheapen the moments and and things that like they felt kind of earned or they made sense in light of she's growing up in a society of only women and meets a man um they did they, they, they weren't afraid of leaning into female stereotypes without just just being female stereotypes right. it didn't feel um, preachy or yeah. like, they didn't have to insult guys to make a yeah, point right. Yeah. And they could do things like she sees a baby and she starts just getting excited. Like, Oh, the baby. Right. It does this thing that is like a very common thing for women to do yes. that feels so natural for her, but in no way diminishes her. Right. She can still also call out all of the, like um, the ways women are treated in society at the time. And it feels like, yeah, that's, she could say that and it doesn't feel out of context because the society she comes from and then, of course, I think because they did have that Zack Snyder influence on the action, which he probably had a hand in directing some of that, the action in it is very cool. Yes. And and then I, one of the things that um, you know DC movies, for better or worse, used to do, and I would say for the better, is that there were actually movies that were saying something. And so right. it's a movie about man's inhumanity to man. And sometimes, you know, with the Zack Snyder was maybe they can get pretentious or they can be heavy handed. But there was a time where, you know, just because it's about a lady with a magic lasso doesn't mean we can't make a statement about life. And they said it during World War One, which was just this like very bleak, meaningless yeah. war. 
Absolutely. It's, it's not, we're fighting back the Nazis. No, there was no, there was no real reason behind it. was a shit yeah, show. It's, yeah. It, it, it was like classic, just yikes. Why yeah. did this happen? Why did all these people die? And you drop this optimistic person in the middle of it that thinks she's going to save the day with her optimism and then realizes, oh crap, man's inhumanity to man is sick. And you go, oh, a movie that's, that has CGI fights and has something to say. That's right. cool. Especially when you look at all the ones now that are just, just hollow. Yeah. And, um, and this was only six years ago when we were, that was what they were still that's doing. In, that's insane that this is only six. It feels like six years 20, ago. it feels like 20. It really does. Yeah. They, I, I mean, I'm in full agreement with you. I, I really enjoyed this. The only thing that really sets it back for me is I think they they went they went for broke in the first film for some reason and made Ares the big bad. Yeah. How, how do you top Ares? He's the freaking god of war. So it, it's you're always going to be jo- dropping from there. Well, no and, and, and they did Ares as a as a uh, yeah, like a mustachio tw- twirling yeah. and, and, a, and a reveal villain. So then it's yeah. like surprise, it's me. It's me as it's opposed me the to whole like. Time. Um, and so it, it just feels like out of the blue, we're doing a big CGI boss fight. And so in the finale, the most interesting thing isn't the big fight. It's not anything Wonder Woman does. It's that Steve goes, you get to yeah. be the hero every day. I get to be, I can be the hero right now. Let, let me have this one. Yeah. yeah like, and it's, and it's like, once again, it, it does nothing to diminish men to prop up wonder mm-hmm. woman as a wonder woman. It yeah. doesn't need to cheapen him. Doesn't need to steal his moment. And and because of that it's profound and powerful, yeah. um, and all all around. So um, I, I mean, I think it gets talky in the end, and I I, th- I think it's the third act is the weakest act, but yeah, I think this is one of the the best movies we got here. And Gal Gadot, or however you say her name, I still don't know. I, I hear I'm saying it wrong, but I think that I'm pretty close. She she's at her strongest in this film too. I don't know what happened after this. If it's just a directing thing, but I feel like she just keeps regressing as the character and and just in general in her performances but in this movie she's really good i Mm -hmm. i i I loved her in this and i wasn't it it was one of those things where you hear the casting and and like the chick from fast and the furious who's you know 90 pounds soaking wet is playing wonder woman but she sells it and and, you know it, it it all worked very well for me i have this film at number three it's my third favorite dceu movie Adam, I have this movie at number three. No way! <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on? Is this at some point in time, we're going to have to start splitting up. But uh, I, just, we'll see I might what just have to start ranking movies on my channel. It's gonna, I'm, I'm going to change it to Adam talks about movies, and yeah. it's just going to be yeah. all ranking videos. I'm just going to take your list and repurpose yeah. them as my own. It's it's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got the market on that. I'll leave that to you. I, at some point in time, you should just take literally one of mine at word for word and just do it straight. <laughs> I'll send you over the exact B roll that I yeah. use. Yeah. Use the exact B roll, the exact clips from the movie, the exact <laughs> memes that I cut in. And do it exact. Just the same shit. And, What's up, guys? Adam here. <laughs> Just remember, this, this is my week, the latest here. movie, <laughs> Aquaman 2, dropped in theaters. So today we're going to stop and rank I don't think I can match your team. energy for, for that long a time. But it would be so funny. Be do, we don't say a single thing and wait to see the first person, like, have it like a prize. A pr- some like some prize for the person that figures it, it out. Be that so, we- it would be so fast. It would be instantaneous. Okay, now we have, here's where the wheels start to come off. Well, we had a good run. The, the screen behind me, of course, prominently displaying uh, cinema's achievement to man, Justice League 2017, directed by Zach. They say it's directed by Zack Snyder? That's yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah, wow. It says in the movie. What an honor. by Zack Snyder. Directed by Patty Jenkins. Uh, I gave this a one and a half stars. Not great. I rewatched this movie recently and I was floored by how much worse it is than I remembered. I think I changed my rating actually. I, I probably had it at two and a half, maybe two. But yeah, after a rewatch, I, I couldn't believe how how absolutely atrocious it is. Yeah. Every, think- the, it's a two hour movie. That's the 
biggest praise I can give it. A lot of movies are very long now, and I don't like it. I'm an old man. I need I need some of them to get to the fucking point. Yep. But this movie, um, you, you can tell it was cut up <laughs> from yep. from a much longer film, much yep. like Batman v Superman. Here, it's way more egregious, though. Yep. The the reshoots are laughable. Ben Affleck's mm -hmm. shifting weight, weight. Like he's one of those skin complexion cards. His hairline's changing. <laughs> yeah. At one point, he's got Dunkin' Donuts coffee in his hand. <laughs> he's just a sad sack of shit. <laughs> Uh, my favorite is when Aquaman and him are having a conversation and he, he literally steps onto a green screen. Uh, he, he goes into a soundstage. The sky is a completely different <laughs> color. And then he does this really tepid dive. He's like, screw you, Bruce Wayne. And he dives into the water. And it's just this like little, little, this little pond splash that someone had to edit in. Some guy's like, oh my God, I don't know. How, we don't have any time. This was supposed to be out yesterday. He just like splashed in his bathtub and they edited it in. I think the funniest ones is when you like read about the, the, even the, they bring a Joss Whedon to do these reshoots and they're like, yeah. yeah, we want you to make it funny. And like, you have to condense the movie. And then he shot it on, on like different film or whatever, like oh. that Snyder shot it on film with one aspect ratio. And then <laughs> Joss Whedon comes in and shoots it on something different. Joss Whedon's on like, his iPhone. <laughs> Joss Whedon's on his iPhone. He's like, okay, here we go. I don't got time for this crap. And there's, and there's a scene in this movie where where Ma Kent and Lois Lane are like talking about their dating lives or something. It's oh. one of these reshoots, and it just oh feels like God. they're on, like on this little set, like just talking about something stupid for two minutes. And it yeah, just because looks... I think this was, I think the Me Too movement was like in high gear. So <laughs> yeah. Joss Whedon's like, how can I wink to the audience that I'm like super progressive? So I quickly like threw this in where they're like, men suck, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> and it feels like it's straight out of a TV, a sitcom. Yeah. It, it really looks is. like a sitcom. And just like, like, I remember when I first watched it, I think I gave it like a, I think it was a C plus. So like sure. negative, but mixed. It's like, it's fun to see them all on the big screen. Yeah, I was there too. Was um, there too. There's like, it's just, it, it's nice. Like if you're our age, the novelty of these was actually still strong. Even mm -hmm. five years ago. Like this was still team up movies was still something like, wow, they're all in the same movie together. That's they gone have, now. They have but, aged like milk. Yes, they have. Um, but that was like special. But even then I was like, this felt like every shot looks weird yeah. because either it was shot uh, like you have these things shot by Snyder that then they cranked up the saturation and the brightness to color correct it. And you can see like the different trailers, the original trailer when it's yes. Zack Snyder was like, it was blue at nighttime, and then you get into the Justice League version. It's like red. It's the color of Flash's outfit. That is the yeah. color of the whole final act of the movie. Yeah. I just rewatched it, and I could not believe how bad it looked at yeah. the end. I I don't know if it's the transition to Max, and they change the colors again, but it looks way worse than I remember from watching this in 2017. I could not believe it. Uh, there's so much bad to say again. I, I just, I just took all these notes on this film. I don't want to, I don't want to completely, you know, give away my roast, but it's it from front to back, everything that could be wrong about this is for instance, when Superman comes back and he has this little heart to heart with Lois, they're for some reason standing in a cornfield. Now, if you just pull back a second and think about that, they're not just on the edge of the field farm. They literally walked into the fucking cornfield to have a conversation. They're not in the driveway. They're not in the house. Why are they in the cornfield? There's no reason. It's so ludicrous. There's another moment where, um, you know, the big fight inside wherever they're at, the, the Technodrome, or they're in the sewers underneath of Manhattan yeah. or somewhere in the Ninja Turtle world. And... Um, they have this big Quicksilver slow motion esque shot where Flash tips the sword back to Wonder yeah. Woman. Why? What was the point? All that they're falling. She gets yeah. the sword and she cuts up one of the parademons, hits the ground, and then Flash immediately saves her. Mm -hmm. There was zero purpose for it. But to your point of just splicing different movies together, mm -hmm. right before that happens, the Flash actually trips and like breaks his ankle on the ground. I'm like, oh no, he's out of commission. But then he gets up and saves Wonder yeah. Woman. What? Yeah. What was the point? Yeah. 
It's the whole and movie. and in that whole sequence, movie. he falls down on top of Wonder Woman yes. onto her boobs, yes. and Gal refused to shoot the scene, and so they had to use a stunt. The stunt woman filmed it because she was like, "No, Joss, I'm not going to do that." Really. And yeah, she well, I heard to... something else. I thought that it was a, originally Joss just like filmed her laying down and he didn't even tell her what it was for. And then he put, put flash on her later. But oh. I, there was probably a lot of like hearsay but, at that. Time. Yeah. So, so some version of it, <laughs> it's not good. It's she didn't not, want to do it as the takeaway. Right. Yeah. The takeaway. Yeah. This was, she was like, what are you doing? This is, this is your follow up to Wonder Woman. Six months later, flash falls on the boobs. Like, really? Yeah. Um, I have I have to give away one more joke too. Speaking of sexualizing Wonder Woman even more so in this, I made a joke because there's several scenes in this movie where the camera is just all up in her. I mean, it's like shot under the bleachers, peeping on her, and her skirt at some points is like full cheeks out. <laughs> and I made the joke that I feel like Whedon had the seamstress on standby, and he's like, every day I want you to remove an inch from her <laughs> from her skirt. And so that she's like full Daffy Duck in it by the time this movie's done. That's how it felt. Yes. I, this to me, um, beyond just the obvious, like this, it's a Frankenstein movie that yeah. the studio demanded a two hour runtime. So it's an hour and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. They trimmed it as tight as they could. Yes. Um, beyond that, I just think it's a gross film that, that it is this. <laughs> like, it's a gross, the, like, like that. I, <laughs> I, I, it's like when specifically you have it, you know, they weren't happy. They wanted to go in a different direction and his, his daughter commits suicide and they're like, oh, yeah. Hmm. And they don't bring in someone that's like in any way compatible, like remotely compatible. <sighs> this of is all never the directors worked. out there. Directors out worked. there. And you think like, yeah, David Ayer, uh, you know, I could, I could see that like they're different, but like, they're not, wildly different yeah I, I remember the person that messaged me dude joss whedon is taking over to direct justice league i was like mm -hmm. dude you're what you're reading lay cinephiles that's from the onion that's satire they're yeah. not joss whedon is not going to finish Zack snyder's movie that doesn't make any sense they're not compatible on any levels their yeah. worldviews, the way they do character arcs, their humor, literally the cameras that they shoot with on and what they <laughs> shoot onto is not the same. And they did. Warner Brothers actually did that where they were oh, so stupid, so stupid that they went, well, he made the Avengers, two Avengers movies that made over $1.5 billion. So I bet in six months he can fix our movie. And then the other part is that they didn't, they so the the CEO could get his bonus. They wouldn't allow oh, yeah. them to push the push it back. That's so they, really they, the takeaway every time with these movies when they rush them out. Is it so the CEO can get his budget or his his bonus, his, his bonus or they can meet their budget quota for the you know it's always a, it's always a quarterly thing with stocks and all these things that I don't understand because I'm still a child inside of a man's body. But yeah, uh, also we have to throw one final tip of the hat to that beautiful mustache CG. Yep. Just absolutely glorious. Yep. Uh, they did the same thing with, I mean, they've done this countless times. They don't give a crap is the bottom line. I remember X2, still one of my favorite comic book movies of all time, X-Men, X-Men United. X-Men 3, they, Brian Singer was going to come back and do it, but he wanted to do Superman first. Fox needed to get a tentpole movie out, so they rushed the shit out of that movie. Yep. Six months time, knocked it out, got Brat, Brett Ratner on board. Mm -hmm. I think Joss Whedon was doing the script at one point too. And they, they threw that out. They should have thrown this movie out. Okay. I have this at number 13 out of a possible 14. It's the second worst movie for the DC. I have, it, I have it at 14. I have yeah. it in the worst spot. This isn't a shocking one. Um, we don't need to celebrate our, yeah. our likeness there. Okay. We are now at, Dear God, we got to go faster, Sean. I don't want to. Yes, let's talk faster. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Two we're. In the we're Gosh, we got 10 more to do. Um, Aquaman 2018, James Wan. This is a absolute mess. It's way too long. It has 13 plots going on. <laughs> it's watchable, but I don't want to watch it again. Jason mm -hmm. Momoa is fine. Amber Heard is like, she looks fine. She does nothing for me as far as an actress goes. but And I think that she, uh, the Snyder cult is as big fans of hers as well. 
We'll <laughs> leave it at that. Yeah, James Wan. This fe- this truly feels like three different movies, not just from a script point of view, but from visuals too. I think James Wan felt like I got one shot to do an Aquaman movie. I want to make every kind of Aquaman movie I can. I'm going to have Pitbull in here singing Africa at some point. It's going to be a buddy road trip film. <laughs> out of the blue, too. You're just watching the, the movie. Blue. Just cuts to... <laughs> just <hear> the, oh! <laughs> Mr. Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah, they're they're like Indiana Jones in it across yeah. the desert. And then there's a, some really beautiful cinematography where they go into the trench and you you know you get those cool wide shots of the creatures but then there's ugly cg green screen and, and then at some points it's like the little mermaid no <laughs> this this movie is such a disaster from from top to bottom go ahead <laughs> um, you know I, I i i don't know that i could would defend any of it uh i think it's a fun mess it's a movie that like goes for entertainment value at the expense of credibility i or consistency. Yeah. Um, I, I think James Wan shoots the action well with the wide shots where you can actually see what's happening, long yep. takes, um, which you that shouldn't be something in these big budget movies. Like, I can actually see what's happening in the action sequences. That shouldn't be a big praise, but it actually turns out it is. Yep. Um, I, I mean, I think that it's just a, a movie that was fun to watch in the theater, but like if I'm sitting at home, I'm not like, hey guys, let this is so an Aquaman. Yeah. Like I, that, and that, and I know we're in agreement on this. I think most critics have reached the same boiling point. And I don't know if it's an age thing or if it just truly is. Cinema has changed so much in the last five or six years. But runtime is absolutely critical to me. I have a podcast coming out on it some Monday coming up. If this movie was an hour 45 and it just focused on like one plot. Maybe it's the brother and the, and the fight, or maybe it's finding the mom and the lost, wherever the hell she is with her crustacean armor. That would have been great. And because watchability is a big thing I, I take away from these. And I know that's definitely something that's generational. I don't think, I know my kids personally don't give a shit about rewatching anything. They, mm-hmm. they like seeing new stuff and that's fair. But I like quoting movies. I like revisiting films that are done well. And so often these things just overstay their welcome. Mm-hmm. Aquaman is two hour, probably two and a half hours or something like that. And I don't, I don't need it. I don't need Highest it. Highest grossing DC movie of all time. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> the foreign market. Oh, you, you know, come on. Ocean. Come on. Every, every mom went out and every wife went out to see Jason Momoa. That's He's true. the if you know women like that kind of animalistic type the bad boy right if you yeah. ask most women they, they I think, like him in movies it doesn't they like, him like in, well yes they like yeah. him in movies if you ask most women i think they would choose beast in beast form in beauty and the beast over the <laughs> over like the actual human version there's something about yeah. him that's just so so visceral mm-hmm. i get i mean i get it yeah okay so you that's like fair. it it's fun it's dumb um i put it at where did i put this fucking thing uh number 11 we might disagree here no 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 we don't um <laughs> i have it no, i have it at 10 I'm, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that much better uh, no no we're right we're I, I right think, in line I, that's what i tried to say like at the beginning of this i i would guess there's an amount of just my raw enjoyment of dc yeah. stuff is probably more so of just yeah like comically characters in a movie I probably have more of that that stuff in me. I'm not cynical enough yet. I was gonna say I'm, you're I'm not as getting... jaded and sad as I am, and that's yes. why that's why you're doing this full time, and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. But then again, um, this year and a few things are just. It's. I think I might be getting there with being like. Yeah, on, I like, saw. I saw a couple on. times on on X, as we all call it now, and not yes. Twitter anymore. It's X for sure. Um, that you were kind of getting dogpiled a few times on some of your Marvel hot takes, which were not hot takes at all. <laughs> just normal takes. Like, but, you totally culti- but you takes. did this to yourself, Sean. You cultivated mm-hmm. an audience of fanboys who mm-hmm. like those Marvel mm-hmm. movies and they don't know it's, anything else. It's, it's, like, it's just as good as it ever was. You guys yeah. are just getting cynical. No, no, yeah. no, that's not well, that. Well, I mean, yeah, we are getting cynical because you can only watch the same movie so many times mm-hmm. before it gets boring. Mm-hmm. So I... Iron Man is great. I don't want to watch Iron Man 30 more times. I want to watch a guy 
getting his powers and learning a lesson and fighting a big version of Iron Man at the end. And we've gotten yeah. that like five times in mm -hmm. MCU, at least Shang-Chi and Ant-Man and well, I can go on. Okay. Uh, we have Shazam. <sighs> mm -hmm. This is kind of in that boat that I was talking about. A uh, very formulaic boy, boy becomes a man. He's got mm -hmm. big syndrome. Yes. A, a much better movie, by the way, Tom Hanks, big, great flick. 2019, David S. Sandberg. I know that director, but I'm not sure offhand what he's directed. It sounds. He familiar. did uh, the second Annabelle movie. Oh God! He did. He did some Annabelle horror. creation. Uh, the the one that was like in an old rickety house, and there's like a girl in a wheelchair or something. I think that's creation, but I don't know. There's there's three. There's like two or three of them. They're all they're all kind of dumb. Uh, I I like Shazam. It's fine. Again, it's a little too long for my for my taste. But uh, and I do think it's totally a little inconsistent. There's a couple yeah. parts that are kind of like horror shows for a right. while. That that scene in the office, right? right. Demons crap. biting heads off, and it's like, yeah. son, please don't kill me. I'm sorry, I was a bad dad. <laughs> Throws them out the window. <laughs> and then, yeah, do then your switched. business, demons. <laughs> and then it, and then it cuts to like Shazam <laughs> drinking some uh, <laughs> pop. <laughs> Whoa, we're outside at night. <laughs> <laughs> dude's getting his like guts ripped out and feasted upon and then they're like let's film me going on this skateboard <laughs> radical yeah yeah uh, that was this the um that was my big takeaway from the movie of like what really like i get you came from horror movies but that doesn't fit in this movie that doesn't yeah. fit at all like and i'm thinking 90 percent of this movie great for my kids they'll have mm -hmm. fun with it it's immature it's silly yeah. so perfect that's this a great family movie and then demons start biting people's heads off <laughs> <laughs> uh i also want to say that who's the main <clears throat> kid is it billy 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 Banks? batson billy batson. Billy ba i'm thinking of like the typo guy um Billy, Billy Blanks. Blanks. Billy Blanks, the Tybo guy. Yeah, Stargate SG, Billy Blanks, one. <laughs> yeah, Billy, I feel like the kid is a better actor than Zachary Levy. <laughs> it's more it's more a, a, apparent, I think, in the sequel. There's a couple characters in these DCEU movies that have to play teenagers, and I feel like they've never been around a teenager before <laughs> because they play them like they're four. Hey, guys, what's, go <laughs> what's going on? Like the, like the Flash movie we'll be talking about. <laughs> Ezra plays the teenage version of the Flash, so over the top, and I I like that movie, but yeah, this was a little too long. Not bad though, not a bad flick. I enjoy it. My kids liked it too. Yeah, uh, I like the Man of Steel cameo at the end from the the mm -hmm. neck down, of course. <laughs> right because down. we hate we hate our Superman that we picked for these movies for some reason. <laughs> That's where when people get like James Gunn, why is he doing this to Henry Cavill? Like. Warner Brothers has been doing this for 10 years. What are you talking about? Why did we not get Man of Steel 2 back? It's so ridiculous. Why did Man of Steel 2 come out before freaking Batman v Superman? Right, right. I mean, this, should, this should have happened a long yeah. time ago. I did a I did a parody, like a short, where I was just, a, I put a phone on a table and I was pretending that it was a Cavill's phone and I just put a date on. It was like, 2004 and then Zack Snyder's on the phone he's like hey but, hey man congratulations you're the man of steel it's happening and then it jumps to like 2007 hey we're doing BVS and it goes to this like chrono chronological timeline of just the the highs and lows you're back in you're back I got Dwayne Johnson on the phone he's gonna save you and then uh yeah it's James Gunn you're fired it's just this absolute <laughs> roller coaster and what's so funny is it spans uh, Henry Cavill's been Superman almost as long as Hugh Jackman's been Wolverine, but Hugh Jackman's actually been in movies. Yeah. <laughs> Cavill's just like off camera Superman. Yeah. It's pretty depressing. Uh, Where did you put this on your, your list? I have it at number six on my list. I oh thought my, I had a oh lot of heart. Oh my God, Sean, did you just copy my list? It's possible. I'm on it's six possible. as well. I'm six as well. Wow. This yeah. is at some point in time, we got to actually, uh, I think split. Yeah, I think we need something to really shake. Maybe a power uh, dynamic that shakes things up. Isn't that what Dwayne Johnson said? Yes. I, can't remember, I, can't remember I, I was expecting a lot more differences. And I, maybe they're about to hit. Yeah. May, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm... According to one of the viewers, we're, we're like the yin and yang, right? I should yes. We should have opposite yeah. lists. I'm reverse flash right now. Right, exactly. I'm just this optimistic, hopeful person. But yeah. somehow our lists are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Let us birds of prey. 
Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. What an awful mix of words what? this is. Yeah. What a terrible title. Gross. I got this at three stars. It's actually gone down for me, much like most of these movies have. I, I, I enjoyed this. I don't ever want to watch it again. It's another Shazam mixed bag for me where I feel like I know exactly where the John Wick team came in and helped with some of the fight yeah, scenes. Yep, and I know where yep, they didn't. And the yep, final act of this mm -hmm. movie is a disaster. The The whole Batman and Robin fun house fight is, is like something out of a Batman and Robin movie. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's not good, but overall, I guess I just, I'm a sucker for Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. So I'm a simple man. You put her on camera, even when you dress her in what appears to be garbage, I'm still into it. <laughs> I mean, they went out of her their way to try to de-sexify her and make her look as miserable as possible. And it still works. Like, what is she wearing? What is this? Right. <laughs> well, and I thought that they kind of like marketed it that way of like, yeah. like this is when you do Harley Quinn from the, the perspective of a woman, like, a woman actively trying to. Have you ever yeah. seen what Marco Robbie looks like normally? Like she doesn't this, do that. No, with this her is hair. Harley Quinn from the viewpoint of a woman woman that doesn't like other women that look good. Uh, yeah, that, that's right. what it is. You're trying really, really yeah. hard to make her look very strange. Yeah, but she's also Margot Robbie. So yeah, I, 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 um, I man, I had a good time with it. Um, it once again, it's not one that I like just throw on and rewatch a lot, but. Uh, when there are all these people like this movie sucks, it's awful, it's man hating. Like, I, what, it's man what, hating. <laughs> like, what, what, I mean, I guess that's what the internet's supposed to say. But it's like, all, it's I watched, always that now. I, I appreciated that it was street level. Like, so many of yeah. these movies are just like, there's a sky beam and they're gonna blow up planet Earth. And this is yeah. just we're in Gotham. There's a crime lord. It, like, it's normal stuff. That I, yeah. I want more of that. Uh, so I appreciated that, and then. Like I thought it was um felt like a like almost like a guy Ritchie, early guy Ritchie movie. It did have a little of, yeah non-linear storytelling. Mm -hmm. People are like, some of the movie doesn't even make sense. Like, right, it's Harley Quinn telling right. her story. She is the definition of an unreliable narrator. It's <laughs> it's supposed to be kind of ridiculous. It spends and, like three minutes watching her make a perfect breakfast sandwich. Breakfast it, sandwich. It, it, it's it's amazing too, by the way. The cinematography in some of this is really good. Yeah. Right, wait, like, even to your point of like the action in the the prison break is yeah. is awesome and all yes. these cool action shots. Those are all the ones in the trailer. And yeah, then you of course. Get, get to the third act, and if you just you watch it and just pay attention to everything. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so bad. The it's, ending is, is such a mess, but yeah, she goes like cocaine bear for a while and takes it yeah. in. And just, she's like cutting limbs off again. Yeah. This, this does feel like another one of those movies that had maybe some influence from the studio trying to be Deadpool again. They put that hard R on there. So half the movie feels R, the other half doesn't. And I mean, there's one scene in this movie that that lives in my head and I, my son, my son watched this last year, and I totally forgot about the scene. And that's when he cuts the people's Fa faces, faces off. Like, off, oh yeah. shit! Oh god! Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. I don't care so much about the. I don't care so much about the swearing. My kids, you know, whatever they know not to swear, but that was brutal. I, yeah. I totally forgot. I'm like, oh god! Oh, he's gonna be thinking about yeah. that for the rest of his life. Yeah, there's certain types. Well, so um, when I was so I'm I, like certain things I'm very squeamish about. Sure. And so when I was in elementary school, I passed out multiple times from, we dissected an eyeball, a cow's eye in the fourth what? grade. Who and did we, you go the, to? <laughs> Texas. <laughs> so Texas, like Ma Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> School? <laughs> Legitimately, the, the, the road in front of my neighborhood where I currently live is the yeah. road that they're drive down in tech, the original Texas Chainsaw oh, wow. Massacre. Okay. Yeah, and that then makes the, sense. That, that's the on remake brand. of Texas Chainsaw Massacre there's a bunch of shooting locations that are at the next city over like five miles down the road. It's where they shot it in the main house. It's 20 minutes. For, and then what a location for Friday, the 13th, the reboot is just five minutes the other way down that road. <laughs> so all these slasher films were shot right around. You're, you're like exactly in the background of half the movies, just living yeah. your life. <laughs> is that Sean Chandler when he was like eight? There I am. Is he but, dissecting uh, a cow's eye? <laughs> so dissecting a cow's eye. And I'm like, oh, a cow's eye. That's going to be cool. Yeah. 
nope. No. Pass out behind everybody. Mm. And then uh, I watching Donahue, and they were doing plastic surgery on someone's face on Donahue. What? <laughs> right, right. TV in the early 90s. That's that's <laughs> when they had like fear, yeah, fear Factor, Joe Rogan's having people <laughs> eat just... mag- live maggots. Like, how is this scary? <laughs> These people might just die. So I pass out in a kitchen, and then because I got nervous about this, I watched the trailer for the movie Dark Man, where it's a oh, lot of him yeah. taking taking masks off. Mm-hmm. But so I see a guy taking a mask off. I recently saw someone's face being skinned while they're doing yeah. plastic surgery. Nicholas so caged. All, so all I see is that, and I go, ah, and I passed out from watching someone take <laughs> A mask off, <laughs> which having now seen the movie, do not it's... watch Face Off, Sean. Do not watch Face Off. So when I did watch Face Off, I, I didn't watch it for like ten years. So I was so yeah. afraid. But all that to get back to where we're going. Yeah, that yes. scene in Birds of Prey was pretty freaky for me too. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a long walk and worth the worth the trip. <laughs> Just to loop back to say, I agree. You know, this is maybe why we have never communicated before. I yeah. feel like we wouldn't get anything done in life. Uh, where did you put this? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I go. I'll go first. I put this at number seven. <laughs> no, no way. Are you serious? We've had we've had single digit <laughs> flip flops, and then the same. Are you at seven? I'm at seven. Yeah, this, this sucks. What a waste I... of time. You didn't even need to come on here. I could have just done this by myself. It, I, I actually had a lot. I, it worked out. I was really hoping you're going to have this at least one lower than me. And I was going to go, that's because you're sexist. I was that's like, you I was going to go women. off on you. Like, I can't believe I came on this sexist channel. I can't wait to call you out on Twitter. This is going to be great. And then we ended at the same spot. And canceled. Completely yeah. canceled. All right. Yeah. Well, that was exciting. Uh, you're done. We are. I feel like we're going a little quicker now. We're over, We're over halfway. Oh, Jesus. Well, we might be sexist now. Wonder Woman 1984, the gift that never gave us anything outside so of let's, COVID. So let's cut to the chase here. Do you have yeah. this in last? I do have this in last. Why do you hate women? This is outrageous. <laughs> like- I walked right into it. I walked right into it. You set it up ahead of time even. <laughs> Why do you hate women? Yeah, um, it's messed up. I mean, I guess I do if, if this is like the litmus <laughs> test because I hate this movie. And upon rewatch, it was it was uh, actual torture. It, it's almost two and a half hours long. I was finding myself pausing it every ten minutes to just see how much was left, and I was mm-hmm. grow- I, I was doing these audible. Oh, why did I choose to make this a roast video? Really yeah. bad, really bad. Um, we we went from a character who was incredibly charismatic likable mm-hmm. strong independent basically everything a woman aspires to be everything i ins- i aspire to be honestly and then we we flip the script and now she is a kind of like miserable uh man needing weak woman who <laughs> uses her one genie lamp wish to not just bring back her old lover that she knew for what an extended weekend. <laughs> we How long like- did she know this guy? <laughs> it's been it's been decades, Diana. Jeez, mm-hmm. uh, she she brings him back in another man's body. body. Who, who I guess goes off into the like the void in Get yeah. Out. I imagine mm-hmm. he's in Get Out right now, and he yeah, sees yeah. everything that's the happening. sunk in place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's in the Stranger Things world. Yeah. I like to, th- I like to think though um, that he comes back and he's got some weird World War One STDs <laughs> and he has like stage one diabetes because of all the punishment that Steve did to it in such. Because yeah. at one point she wakes up and Steve's like, "This is my third pop tart this morning." <laughs> just completely wrecks this guy's body and then just bolts. She's like, "I'm done. I'm out." I, I mean, like just even on that level of like you. Thinking through the plot, the ramifications of what we're actually doing. Yeah. And this is one of those classic plot points of all you do is you flip flop it. Yeah. Flip flop it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you say, the and, um... the, yeah, what if there's a girl who's replaced her body's replaced with the consciousness of someone else and this man is sleeping with the body of this other woman? woman. Why did they need to even do this? I, I, yeah. Right. You could keep the exact same story and Steve's just there out of thin air. It didn't require a vessel. What? 
Right. No one's thinking through the magical logic. Of right. This. The, right. The, the magic of this, like mm, that, the magic of that <laughs> makes more sense than the well, magic. Well, according of this. to the necromancer, um, this just doesn't add up at all. I don't. I don't really get it. Um, yeah, uh, Pedro Pascal. He plays. I don't know, like a like a like a Donald Trump esque type of character. I Whatever guess. this this swindle, <laughs> like just salesman guy, a that, salesman like, who wants all this power and wealth, and he. It, he it, what is his goal? Once we every, get past the beginning, more, just yeah, more, more. more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He has a son, and it, it, that's supposed to be the thing that I guess we relate to with the character and sympathize with. Because at the end, after all the chaos is done, his kid somehow is hiding out in Washington, D.C., just off in the woods. And he's like, Papa, Papa, he, he's he's just out there. And Pedro walks out and he's like, oh, son. And they have this slow motion. <laughs> I just don't know. I don't know how you got to this point in the script, Patty. What were you thinking? Right. I was reading a, something yesterday. They're like, the sequel to like the one of the best female empowerment movies of all time in the sequel there's a literal cat fight as the third oh my movie. god that's gold i didn't i brought that up in the roast how there's a cat fight I, I yeah, love that. A literal cat fight and, and, and as soon as you see it you're like oh that looks bad that looks so bad and they just they forced everything for no reason uh kristen wig who plays cheetah girl or whatever the hell i don't know what she is cheetor or something like that she she wants to be like Wonder Woman, so she does the she's all that glow up where she takes off the glasses and puts on heels and suddenly she's hot. Yeah. And for some reason, she gets two wishes. How does this how does this system work? All they have to do is touch the thing. They don't have to say a chant. They don't have to perform a ritual. They just touch it. And they're like, I want a coffee. And then, oh, here's a coffee. So she gets a second wish and she decides she wants to be an apex predator and turns into this cat, like a, a reject from the cat's movie. And it's really sad. Wonder Woman never uses her sword or shield. I guess she forgot them in World War I world, but she gets them back in Batman v Superman. The, the logic at the time was that Patty Jenkins wanted her to be more of, I guess, a peace keeping an officer that doesn't kill she's you know this joyous person so she doesn't have her amulets anymore or she forgets that she has them her lasso does everything this time around it's like thor's hammer and we find a way to have it an invisible jet but yeah. we have a sequence where they they go to a museum oh my god yeah they steal one they steal a plane out of a museum and as we all know planes at museums have a fresh tank of gas of course, well, yeah, um, and they just work. They, they, they just of work. course work, yeah. And if you were a pilot in 1917, mm -hmm. you probably can fly a jet. No, well, no, Sean, <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, I just rewatched this. Okay. They they purposely find an old tiny type plane, like one that he knows the uh okay. the manual okay. of because he watched That's... Top Gun back gotcha. a couple years gotcha. ago. Yeah. Uh, but what what's really funny is they go in this plane and <laughs> she's like, oh no, we're on the radar our loud ass plane, uh, you know, from the olden times. Well, thankfully I tried to trick one time. It didn't work, but I, I rubbed my hands together and I made things disappear. <laughs> she does that. She's like, Ooh, Ooh, I hope this works. And it works. It, it, it's the, the lamest thing ever. Why, why did Patty think she needed to force all of these dumb yeah. elements into the film? Like no one's, no one's clamoring for the invisible jet to make an appearance. Yeah. I, I understand yeah. that's kind of an oxymoron, and but it, it, do I recall that the solution to the problem has her using the lasso of truth on mm -hmm. a radio broadcast that goes yes. out to all mankind. Yes. She, uh, cause Pedro can be everything in this movie is a series of fortunate events. It's all convenience all the time. So Pedro goes to convince the president to give him all the nukes or something. It doesn't matter. And right behind him, there's this beautiful presentation going on about a new satellite program. The government's working on and super secret. And so Pedro's like, this is exactly what I need. And so he's able to broadcast to literally everyone in the world at once. And they all give him their wishes. And Wonder Woman had a lasso. And Gal Gadot just gives this beautiful speech about righteousness and, and doing the right thing and, and letting things go. And every single person on Earth renounces their <laughs> wish. <laughs> every one of them. Because they had to all do it or it wouldn't work. It was beautiful. 
completely beautiful. This movie's yeah. a perfect film. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have it at last. You have it at, I assume, second to last? No, I, I have it at, at uh, 12. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, so this is where we've, uh, this is wow. the furthest apart we've been. Oh, that's this right. I added one under you because you said uh, 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 you, Suicide I, I Squad. I hate women. Isn't... Yes, of course. Yeah, I hate you... women. Um... Um, so, yeah, I have it. Uh, um, I have Suicide Squad and Just, uh, Justice League below. Justice League, right. Interesting. Both of which also feature strong female leads. So I guess yeah. we're still all good on um, the, the women hating, I guess. Yeah. Okay. That's kind yeah, of what yeah. I was getting. We're at. equal in there. It was just, which woman do we hate? In which which, so. <laughs> which one do we hate more? Here we go. Zack Snyder's justice league. Look at this three and a half stars. One of the higher. Yeah. Ones. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing we're going to deviate quite a bit on this one. Yes. I'd I imagine so. Probably going to be, this is going to be the controversial take. Yeah, this is where, yeah, fire, it, just the the fight breaks out now. No. Would you like to um, speak your case first or would you like me to shit on it first? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I loved it. Um, just, <laughs> I, I was a, you know, sometimes it's tough to distinguish between just you're so excited a thing exists and it's so mm -hmm. much better. But I, I, like, I like Zack Snyder in his his strange worldview and his perspective on things as you know, treatment of mythology. And so he gets this movie that's designed and allowed to be self-indulgent and go mm -hmm. all out for it. And it's not in the theater. It's broken up into chapters. So it's designed kind of like episodes of television. So you can binge it the way you would binge a TV show, pause, yeah. go pee pee between episodes um, get your new, more popcorn and pick it back up. Uh, you know, if they put it in theaters, it wouldn't have been the four hour version, but um, you're just able to tell this epic story where they're able to set everything up. All the little details. Everyone has a character arc. That's an important piece to play in the finale. And when you can see the bastardized version of justice league, where they yeah. removed all of that and they tried to just cut between all of it and make everything happen. Uh, and you see it, 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 all of the tension, all of the setup yeah. was removed. And so it's just intro to scene, payoff, next scene. Um, and suddenly you see the version of it that sets all slowly builds through the pieces. And even the, um, the attack uh, on uh, Themyscira and the way that it plays out. I love that scene. It, it Like in this one, everything happens in a manner where you're like, oh, they're trying to do this to stop this, and he, they were able to do this, and it it's all set up and paced properly. Well, there's actual and, tension in this one, right? right correct. Yeah. Like it's it, it just you as a sequence, it's the perfect example of why Justice League as a whole doesn't work, right? Um, I'm with so, you on all of that. I'm with you on all of that. Uh, and so I, I just really dug that um, because. It has an epic runtime with all of these mini plot lines that they're able to properly build together. When you get to the moments of revelation, even though you know what they are watching it beforehand, like the sequence where they piece it together, wait mm -hmm. a minute, in light of this thing and 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 this thing, we're able to bring Superman back, who's maybe the one person that can stop this other thing. Right. They, they play it out in a moment where it's, a, it's the same scenes in Justice League, but this one's actually set up. Right. And it's the culmination of the movie up to that point in time. And the movie swells and you're like, oh, I got, I'm getting chills. Even though I knew this was going to happen the whole movie. I knew this is where this whole thing was building towards. And then of course, you know, you get into the third act and uh, instead of the flash pushing a car as the setup for a joke that he's stupid and Superman's better than him. Instead of that, he turns back time to stop an explosion from destroying the earth. Like, yes, that was the, the characters definitely have stuff to do. Whereas yeah. in the justice league, Superman shows up and everybody's completely useless in yeah. his, it's just, it's absolutely comical. And um, they design it that way. They yes. literally make it like flash this Demi over here. What's the point of the flash? What are you going to yeah, use he, him for? The flash goes to save that Russian family that for some reason, Joss Whedon thought we needed. I, that yeah, was like, so Let's weird. make it personal. There's a yeah. family. Like, a this is a movie that ha it has to be two hours long. Oh, They're trimming so back the actual plot. 
Yeah. So they add in this this one family. Yeah, but the Flash goes to lizard. save them. He has a good five minute head start, and then Superman's like, "Oh, there's a, there's a disturbance in the forest." He takes <laughs> off and catches up to the Flash, who who is way <laughs> ahead of him. So he they totally discredit yeah. Flash all and together. He's, and he, and he's carrying a building. Yeah, he's carrying everybody. He's carrying Flash a building. It's like, ha, 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 what's the Flash going to do? Yeah, I, the, uh, so I uh, grew up watching the 1990s Flash TV show. Oh, I remember and, that, yeah. And uh, so I was at a Comic-Con. He that, eats the bowl of cereal really fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I recorded over my mom's copy of Flashdance to record the pilot <laughs> movie of the Flash. <laughs> that really happened. That's awesome. Um, and so I, I met him at a, at a comic con a, a few years back, and he oh, like nice. told us. St- and people were like, "What did you think about the Justice League movies?" Like you could tell he's trying to be political. He's like, "The whole movie treats the Flash as a joke. Like, yeah. like my life has kind of been defined by this character. They finally put him in a movie, and the the even in the finale of the film, he's only used as a punchline. Like <laughs> this yeah. stupid guy." But he and, jokes and it, about brunch, which is a just a joke straight ripped off of a Seinfeld episode. So that was fun. But all that to say, and then you, but you get to then this one of like, you, you like how crazy it is that there was better there these better ideas that they're like, no, nah, let's let's do a joke instead. Yeah, Cyborg so, actually has a plot or like a mm-hmm. like a narrative arc, which mm-hmm. is nice. I, so I, anyway, yeah, I'm I, a huge fan. I I appreciate all of that, and I do agree. Oh god, my screensaver went off. Hang on, let me get back Uh-oh. to it quick. Wow, hang on. This kind of the ambiance of this live stream kind of just this got is awkward. Yeah, bit, maybe you know. I should go to a different one. <sighs> hang on with me. I got a Harry Potter icon. That's how you know we're going too long when uh, my screensaver is like we're done. Let's do um, let's do Suicide Squad. Yeah, let's do the the masterpiece Suicide Squad. Okay. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> I feel like okay. This, first off, this movie is way better than the Justice League. It's a movie. It has a beginning, middle, and end. It's it feels Lord of Lord of the Rings esque in scale. It's definitely a very big movie. It's very ambitious. I fucking hate that it's in four by three aspect ratio. It's the most pretentious. <laughs> That's the most pretentious <laughs> bullshit I've ever seen in my life. I don't. No, no one has a TV in this aspect ratio. There is no one has an IMAX screen in their there house. Is no, no one. Logical enjoy. reason. I had people bend over backwards. Like you don't understand, Adam. It was shot for IMAX. You're getting the full frame. I'm not getting the full fucking frame. I cut off half of my TV. They're like, well, you can have bars at the top or bottom. Yeah, they're going with. The like the feng shui of the TV. They're not going against the grain. God damn it. Okay, so <laughs> and and also it doesn't go with his other movies. It doesn't flow naturally when you go from two movies that are in widescreen format to the freaking box. Moving past that, I feel like every single step forward he takes, there's half a step backwards into this weird loony place. <laughs> For instance, the bank scene with Wonder Woman, so much better. Really cool. Yes. Once then again, she, tension set up. Yeah. Yes. And then she blows half the fucking place <laughs> up for no reason. This is a woman who takes pride in architecture and, you know, history. And she's just. <laughs> she, the, the only It's a cartoon. The only thing left of the villain is his hat. It floats down. <laughs> That actually happened. He filmed the hat going down. I was just waiting for a... Um, There are so many moments like that where I will be completely invested and it does have stake. It does have tension. But then out of nowhere, Martha's mom, for instance... I'm sorry, Martha's mom. Martha, for instance, has this nice heartwarming scene (laughs) with her son. And then she turns and her eyes turn color. She's Martian Manhunter in disguise as an elderly woman. (laughs) <laughs> why why it doesn't go anywhere it's co- it totally discredits the scene we just witnessed there's a scene where flash saves a girl this is maybe in real time 20 seconds of footage that Zack snyder slows down to 14 minutes 
because of no. slow motion. I don't get why. With he Iris, got... it's it's his love interest. They're they're I lovers. Don't ca- well, that really goes nowhere either, right? I mean, we what don't... the Flash? The Flash man. Well, I mean, in this movie, it doesn't go anywhere. The the girl, we never ever see her again, right? She shows up in the Flash, yes, at the way end of the movie. <laughs> She's like, hey, I, I'm here too. Uh, every single thing in this movie is like that. It, it's too much Snyder. And I do feel like at some point he kind of did change as a director from the guy that I love in 300 or Dawn of the Dead. And he went all in on the sucker punch style of Zack Snyder. And that stuff does not really work for me. It doesn't speak to me in the same way. And again, for everything he did right, which was a lot, and it is a watchable movie with some cool stuff. And it's it, it does make sense. And it's large scale. There's just too many little dumb things. And the final 25 minutes of this movie needs to burn. It needs to be thrown in the trash. It's so embarrassing. There's like three different ending epilogue things. And they're they like are in competition to see how cringy and terrible they can get. <laughs> like fucking jokers in they're back in the wasteland again. I was half waiting for my brother to come out of the bathroom and be like, what did I miss now? <laughs> Mira's there. She lost her accent. She has a British accent now or something. Crustacean armor. Batman's in the duster. I don't know why he's still dressed up as a bat. Now it just seems stupid because there's like nobody left on Earth. So who are you? Who are you fooling, dude? They all know you're Bruce Wayne. Anyway, I, I could go on and on about this movie and what a clown show it is but i also don't hate it at the same time that's what's so weird about it i i had a good time with it i'm glad he got to make whatever this was supposed to be <laughs> and and now we're done now we're, we're done uh i put this at number five you got it at number one as, don't you you are as a, a fucking snyder as a true fan of cinema here it is I have it at number one. <laughs> I was going to do a spit take, but I don't want to ruin my stuff. Um, yeah, that's... Wow. Okay. As someone that understands they got to you. character arcs they got to you. cinema, they and got that to has you. been threatened by them many <laughs> times. Blink twice if they're there right now with you. <laughs> okay, well... Um, you know, there there is that. I can't say I can't say I'm not disappointed, Sean, but we had a good run. Let's go back and see what else we can salvage out so of this now relationship. I'm trying to piece together your number one, and I'm assuming it's Black Adam. Gross. That you have <laughs> Gross. Shazam two. <laughs> now you're getting there. All right, we have the Suicide Squad. I'm James looking at your Jones. score. I'm piecing this together. You're one of those people. <laughs> what what the... You're one of those MCU fanboy, yeah. James Gunn, yeah. Tito, hates the sound of freedom. <laughs> uh, the, su- the Suicide Squad 2021, he did it. James Gunn saved the DCEU by burning it to the ground and making it like a phoenix rising from the ashes. This is really just a a starter pack, I guess, for Warner Brothers to kind of test and see what this guy really can do when he doesn't have the Disney bucks behind him. And it turns out he can do a lot. He he basically took the same character, Deadshot, uh, changed him a little bit, classed him up with Idris Elba, Basically the same plot. Uh, he's got the daughter that dis- that doesn't think highly of him. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, he's going to prove this himself. This is not subtle what happened here. Not subtle in the slightest. This is what we call a soft reboot. It's technically a sequel in the same way that Jumanji is a sequel to Jumanji or whatever the hell they call that. Welcome to the jungle. Like, come on, you're, you're a freaking new movie. This brought over Amanda Waller, which I'm actually glad about. I think Viola Davis is so good in these movies. Uh, they brought over Boomerang to kill him off right away. <laughs> they brought over, uh, obviously, Mick Harley Flag. Quinn. Yeah. I I freaking dug the vibe in this movie. It's definitely got a, a bit of a Guardian style to it. Obviously, James Gunn's known for this music. He blends it in here very well. Unlike Suicide Squad, he doesn't just slap <laughs> shit yeah. on top. He actually builds his scenes and storyboards them around yeah. his yeah. vision. Um, right. Well, and even, uh, is even to do a little rabbit trail on that, but like... He actually has a deep knowledge of music. Yes. If he picks a song, he really knows what he's doing with it. It's not superficial. It's not 
pandering to the lowest common denominator, right. even to like, you know, pick on a, a totally different movie, but like Thor Love and Thunder, oh, it felt like Taika Waititi, he knows Led Zeppelin and Guns N' Roses. Wow. Where did you discover these two obscure <laughs> bands? No, like, no okay. S- seriously, Sean, there ha- this is a conspiracy theory. There has to be a thing with Disney movies now uh, after Thor Ragnarok, where, you know, obviously with, with, um, uh, now I'm forgetting the name of the song. What was the big song in Ragnarok? Uh, immigrant song. Uh, immigrant song yeah. After immigrant song, I guarantee you, Disney started doing this shit where they're like, okay, if you want to be featured in our next big tentpole MCU movie, pay this much money and you can get a t-shirt in the film. You can get a poster in the film because Thor Love and Thunder doesn't just have one song by Guns N' Roses. There are two songs at least. There's a freaking poster on a kid's wall. He's got a shirt and he calls himself Axel. Mm -hmm. Give me a break. Yeah. There's something going on. There's something going on. But but it, but like it's it, it's the most superficial version of yeah. what James Gunn did really well. Right. Where like even in an interview, James Gunn's like, yeah, I, he, I in an uh, interview with Michael Rosenbaum, who's a friend of his, he's like, well, you know my taste in music. You know this isn't the stuff I listen to. Mm-hmm. Like he said that he's not putting in his favorites or like the two songs he knows. He's putting in the songs that he think fits the characters in the movie and what he's trying to do and That's what. Brilliant. Oh. Um. As opposed to, yeah, like everyone else, just like <laughs> Bohemian he, he raps. He cares. Yeah, right. He cares and he, he actually knows stuff. He actually Did has- you watch uh, Peacemaker? Yeah. That scene with House of Pain playing is mm-hmm. just top tier. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my favorite moments in, in a, a TV show in a long time. Mm-hmm. But this this movie is full of you know great action, some really, really fun characters. I mean, he, he James Gunn is in his prime when he's making these ugly disgusting <laughs> creatures <laughs> lovable things you care about for some reason i think harley is top form here and i really like the idea of yeah we're gonna make a suicide squad movie where people are actually disposable we're mm-hmm. gonna kill off mm-hmm. the original team in a misdirect mm-hmm. and that's how we're welcoming people into this new wild mm-hmm. world I, I dig this movie a lot, and I'm very excited for uh, what he has to bring to the yeah. DCU going forward. Because you're one of those people. I'm one of those people. Zack Snyder, and yeah. you, how dare you? Yeah, how I'm, dare I'm, you? I'm, I'm, I'm anti-Snyder, of course. Yeah, 300's oh. like in my top 100 movies of all time, by the way. I love that movie. And, and when it came out, I've mm. never seen anything like that before. Oh my God, Just like so such, awesome. Uh, and just like... Like a movie with such a distinct aesthetic, yes, uh, such a vibe to it, uh, yes. and I hadn't watched it in a long time, uh, and I you know, watched it whenever um, a few years back, whenever Zack Snyder had two movies come out in a year, and just watched mm-hmm. all of his movies, and I was like, this movie holds up. It's just oh. so good. It's, it's such a-, a bro flick, and there's so mm-hmm. many great unashamedly quotes. a bro. Flick. Oh yeah, and, it, and it, my it, wife loves it too because mm-hmm. she gets to see all these hot looking dudes kicking mm-hmm. ass again. It's that whole animal, you know, yeah. vibe thing. But the the dialogue in that is so freaking good. Mm-hmm. I hope you had a hearty breakfast because tonight we dine <laughs> in hell. hell. And Gerard yeah. Butler is just <laughs> selling everything. Man, Wait, if you think about like he saw, like he'd been in movies before that. Yeah. He instantly became a big movie star. Oh, yeah. Just, like, it was one role. And, and then just... he instantly stopped being a big movie star when he did, like, four terrible movies. Yeah. Gamer and... Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even... He did a couple of rom-coms. Oh, yeah, something. Ugly Truth or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Such just... a strange career that never... never recaptured the magic of Leonidas. But any, anyway, so yeah. back to the, the Suicide yeah, what, Squad. What do you think of this movie? So I, I got it way up there, not quite as high as you, because uh, yeah. I've run out of top spots. But mm-hmm. um, what I what I love about it is um, so much of the comic book movie genre now is inspired by the past comic book movie genre, where we have a checklist of what you need in a Marvel movie, of a checklist of what you need in a superhero movie, and so I, I call it like basically creative inbreeding. Where yeah. they're just movies, just they're coming from themselves. So it's just all in the family line and diminishing returns. And then you start getting these freakazoid things eventually yeah. out of it. And then you watch The Suicide Squad, and it's very overtly the Dirty Dozen plus DC. Of course, and you yes. and, and and with the concept of the Suicide Squad, you go, that's not like 
a far stretch. You go, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Those two things go together. Let's merge those up. And so it feels different. It's pulling in outside influences um, while being kind of true to other things. So it feels fresh, new, different. You have that James Gunn ability to take weird oddball characters and find their humanity, like Polka Dot Man. Somehow you you have like a heartfelt moment of se- like heroic sacrifice from Polka yes. Dot Man. Like yeah. that shouldn't work. Like a, like um, a seventh string comic book character no one knows yeah. about. Right. Nobody knows an inherently stupid, weird, off-putting in the way that he like he's barfing out these balls and stuff it's it's gross like it's yeah. disgusting and he's weird mm-hmm. both as a guy and his powers are weird yeah, he's got mom issues and yeah. and he finds the humanity in that of like the way that person would be alienated and so you get to this and they take this line that's in the trailer i'm a superhero and when you see it in the movie, it's so profound. Yes. It actually means so much because of that gift that James Gunn has of finding the humanity and the weird and taking these ensembles and squishing them together. And somehow like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy were C-list characters and all of a sudden they're the most lovable mm-hmm. characters. And like right now in the last, since Endgame and besides Spider-Man movies, these are the like the these are the A list now. It's Guardians yes. of the Galaxy. Um, oh yeah, Guardians are so good. I love those movies. And also, just look at the difference a director makes. Rick Flag is in both of these, and he is atrocious in Suicide Squad. <laughs> right. he, he's like whining. Like, he's, he's like when I saw him girlfriend. show when I when I heard he was in this one, I was just thinking, what? Why are we bringing Rick Flag back? Yeah. First off, his name is Rick Flag. <laughs> Secondly. He sucked in Suicide Squad. He's getting his butt kicked constantly. And, and yeah. he's whining about a girl. It's like oh. this mopey guy like, oh, oh. my girlfriend. She played yeah. around with magic. June, June Moon or whatever her enchant- the Enchantress character's name is. Yeah, I love this. I have it at number one. Number uno. I'm guessing you have it at uh, four? We'll say four for today. Oh, no. Is it lower than four? No, it four four can be a faithful real answer. Okay, that's fair. That's not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will ex I will expand in the near future as we only have a few options left. We do only have a few and, left. And sh- you're thinking what could be competing for some of those higher spots? The well, next certainly the next one that we're going to talk about. I imagine the 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 power dynamic has shifted or whatever. What did he say? What was his line? Something like that. I mean, I think it was I mean, that. The Rock Power <laughs> Shift DC. It was like some stu- super like stupid thing. Oh, the hierarchy of power in the hierarchy DC universe yeah, is about to change, brother. Yeah, missed, that's a good phrase. Hierarchy, hierarchy of, of power. power. Yeah, it certainly did. It certainly did. We. Uh, I don't like this movie. I think it's it, it's really dumb. Uh, I do think it's you know it's a watchable. It's watchable in the way that maybe you, you have nothing better to do on a sunny Sunday rainy afternoon with your kid and you want to entertain him for a little bit. But outside of that, I just feel like this movie came out in 2022, but it feels like something that would have come out like alongside Jonah Hex or, or Ghost Rider. And because Dwayne Johnson's such a big star, they were able to pump more money into a script and make it seem like it was this monumentous amazing thing when in fact it's really just got like a rip-off x-men school and characters <laughs> with a rip-off superman character set in the most green screened bland city i've ever seen yeah. that's it I liked it too. I thought it was great. This is actually oh, my okay. number one film. I, I decided. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was a Zach Snyder's Justice League is actually at eleven. This it is number a... one, of course. Uh, I had a lot more fun with it, but mm-hmm. I, it's another one of those movies, it, it, very much like Aquaman. Of like, I had I, that. I enjoy playing with my DC characters in the movie, sure. so I just have more fun. You with like the skateboard the kid. You like the the kid in the movie that <laughs> that's that's what really grounded it for me. You like the Ooh. Black Panther triangle thing they were trying to do, like the Wakanda Forever. The, uh, <laughs> this is the sarcasm coming through. <laughs> this is where we're getting the the com- the confrontation. Yeah. 
And then my or, a, my halo forms above my yeah, head. Yeah, the halo oh, coming out. As a, a generous person that just th- – these people worked so hard on this movie. How dare you treat oh them this God. way? About the, I, this, they you know movies take a long time to make, right? Why don't you make a movie? Why don't you make a fucking movie? Yeah. I love that. That's my favorite. Where's, where's your script? Could Where you is- really do better? <laughs> Come on, hey, hey! Show me the movies you made. I'm sure yeah. they're great. You just wanted to be in this movie, and you're jealous that you didn't get cast for it. That's it. You cracked the code. Um, so, so I, it, it, my my son is a big fan of The Rock. So went to go see it. It was just a lot of fun to watch mm. the movie with him. Yeah. See the big grin on his face. Um, you know, I, I call them Taco Bell movies. They're cinematic fast food. <laughs> they're like. My taco, my my tacos from Taco Bell are always soggy. It doesn't stop me from ordering them every Sunday and sure. dousing them in Diablo sauce. Um, so there, that's what this is to me—a movie that, like, on no level could I defend this, but for me, it's very consumable, um, just fun stuff. <clears throat> I get it. I totally get it, and I think I'm definitely harder on this film because Dwayne Johnson's shtick of being Dwayne Johnson is wearing very thin on me. And again, because the script feels like something much older. And he was cast 15 years ago. He was cast in like 2008. And so there's a side to that. That's probably like, Oh, that's kind of real. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's kind of the whole jaded cynical thing again with the, like you were saying with the MCU, we, we, we've seen this stuff so many times that the, the sheen is gone now. Mm -hmm. And all again, black Adam, if you don't watch a lot of superhero movies, if this is one of the only superhero movies right. you've seen, or and that's that's fair. A lot of people have only seen they they're not like us where they watch all of this trash. <laughs> I would I would definitely score it higher, but because I've been here so many right. times and I know Dwayne Johnson's thing is just not doing anything for me. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot of these movies kind of fall into that. Or yes. well, this one, the next movie on the list, they fall into that category of okay, it's 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 moving fast. It's it's delivering all the the people in capes flying around skyscrapers right. and buildings are blowing up. The novelty yeah. of that. It's well, it's fast. It's, not, the, it's fast it's and the furious with with a with a cape on. I, yeah. I didn't feel like concerned for anyone. I didn't I didn't really understand the plot that much. I, mean, I, I didn't care about it. Uh, I put this at number ten. You're at like a you're like three. <laughs> no no. I have it at nine. Okay, we're back. We're back, baby. Yeah. There's, we had a couple where we went off there for a little yeah, bit. The, well, the parents were fighting for a little while, but we're back. Uh, we're okay now. Okay, Whew. we're, we're I, we've made up. Well, let's my heart see was racing can... there a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's not often when I watch a movie, put out a review, and then immediately think. I was maybe a little too nice about this one. <laughs> Shazam Fury of the Gods is that movie. Saw it with my kids. We enjoyed it. And then I let it sink for a little bit. And I thought, did I really like any of that movie? I don't I don't know if I did. I have it at three stars. That's maybe generous. This one, more than any others, I found myself kind of hating Zachary Levi or Levy, whatever you say. I, I didn't like him in this movie. He, mm-hmm. he really annoyed me. Billy has matured even more than he was in the first film. And then he, for some reason, regresses into this man child (laughs) that I don't think he was ever in the same room as the kid actor because they're nothing alike. It's lost in translation. The movie is, it's, it's fine. A lot of big explosions. Honestly, it's pretty much black Adam again for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Similar sorts of thoughts of, it's just one of these very mediocre blockbuster films Mm -hmm. that delivers jokes, delivers action set pieces, but we've seen this before and we've seen it better. Yeah. And in the case of this movie, it's the specific gimmick of Shazam is the whole point is he's a kid. That's a superhero. Right. And then the actual plot line for Billy is he's a, legal grown-up about to go off on his own <laughs> that's a lot of the movie and so it like the whole point is yeah he's actually grown up like, right oh you graduated it's it's time to go off on your own and they're trying to figure all that out what that looks like 
Well, it's cut- and one of the one of the kids because they're all Shazams in this one, right? Yeah, there's like all there's of like them, a are. whole crew of them. One of the girls is playing herself now in the film. Yeah. Beautiful actress, but it's so weird because Billy's not much younger than her. So it's like, why does she stay in her own form? And why do the step parents not recognize her on TV? By the way, <laughs> that was also weird. But Billy's still turning into this middle aged guy. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, and also to your point about, you know, it, it's fun because it's a kid turning into an adult, the big thing, but he's a superhero. That worked really well in the first one because he's going to high school. They're, yep. you know, they're, they're up right. to, sh- there's shenanigans, they're screwing around. But in this one, that, that whole thing is kind of pointless. The, the yeah. whole transition it, it doesn't, stuff, it doesn't matter. It, Right, it doesn't play into the actual plot, and yeah. so then you, I, I, I kind of dug the on a maybe the story villain side to it, mm-hmm. getting into the lore of Shazam. I was like, I, I think some of this maybe works a little bit better than the, in the first movie. It's like, ah, oh, my dad was a jerk, and that guy turned <laughs> me down to be Shazam and have powers. He didn't think I was worthy. I'm going to dedicate my life to sticking it to my dad and sticking it to that yeah. wizard. The villains are better for sure. Plus, you got Lucy Liu in there. I, I'm not going to complain much. I love yep. Lucy Liu. So I think like on that level, there's some things that kind of um, were better. But the actual film itself, because the central gimmick doesn't work, the right. it's gone. It's yeah. not. It's no longer big as a superhero movie. It's just Zachary Levi acting too immature right. as a superhero. Uh, so it just doesn't quite work the same. And so you're kind of left with um, generic superhero movie with, once again, superheroes with capes flying around in city, punching bad guys in capes and stuff like that. Yeah, it's um, not big anymore. It's it's almost Freaky Friday because these, yeah. char- these characters don't have a connection to each other. Or these actors don't seem to be in sync at all. So I put this at, uh, I've got it at eight. Do <laughs> you have it at eight? Yeah, I have it at eight. <laughs> is it still at eight, or is that where you had it before? Um, that's where I had it. Because you said you revived it, so we're all. Oh, no, I, 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 I'm say, yeah. I mean, I, I could move it down. I don't think anything underneath of it I would say is better. I'm not obviously not as high on the DC EU in general as you yeah. probably are. No. So, yeah, I'm I have it. At, with that. I have it at eleven on mine. Okay, so, but I would. Like Black Adam, Aquaman, Shazam, to they're all kind of like in that. Yeah, they're they're, 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 all, they're all kind of like tied in that. Like they're fun, but just kind of like mediocre. Too much stuff going on, or whatever. This if if I really wanted to make this as true to form as I could, I would just look at the runtime on these movies and base it <laughs> off of that. Whichever one's shortest moves up in the list. Moving on, we have we're almost to the home stretch i should oh. remind people and sean i know it's it's late i really appreciate you trooping through this uh you don't have to stick around obviously but if you guys have questions super chats are always appreciated i answer them all at the end you can also give me your you know your your ranking on the dceu or whatever you want to do shoot it at me it's a it's a tough it's a tough hobby slash job for me to have i have a full-time job and kids and all that stuff sean knows how it goes and youtube payout not great not so great. Let's go to The Flash. I obviously like this movie quite a bit. Gave it four stars. It's an easy movie I could also make fun of, but I think that the things that don't work don't take away from my overall enjoyment. I think it's got a solid script. It's got plenty of fan service. It's got, uh, you know, Keaton back. It made me actually like Ezra as a character where in previous Snyder versions, I just thought he was kind of meh there. Mm -hmm. This one gave me emotional stakes. Uh, Kara was great. I I don't have many complaints outside of obviously the super superficial stuff. It looks laughable. (laughs) CG babies in the microwaves. And I, I found this, the context to be very fun and engaging. So yeah, it looks like a Pixar movie from, Toy Story one at times, but it's uh, it's working for me. Uh, I I agree. Um, okay. I so I saw it at one of those early fan screenings and then put out my review, 
it was like yeah. very positive. Like, yeah, I had a good time with it. Like I, I, I bought into the actual journey. I think the story of the flash is stronger than the story in Spider-Man, no way home, which is oh. like, no, oh, I want to get into college. Yes. Fully, oh, fully agree. I, I'm actually, that's actually fun that you say that. Have you always felt that way? Because I've yeah. been, yeah. I've been bitching about that since day fun. Yeah. When that movie came out, I'm like, ah. listen, the movie's, movie's good but the story's terrible yeah it's, it's the little moments that save that film yeah yeah so I, like i from before it came out i was like oh is this really the setup for the how they're gonna do multiverse? oh yeah the, in, the, in the trailer they're right like, they're like oh hey can you get me into college buddy it's like sure bro oh crap i forgot to say let this person oh crap i forgot and I'm like and you and they were kind of and you were like telling yourself this has got to be misdirect, right? This yeah, is there's got to be more to it. Yeah, yeah, no, they even it's it's more insulting because at one point, uh, Doctor Strange is even like, "Did you think about asking the dean?" <laughs> He's like, wah, 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 blow explosions, people coming in from different places. Yeah, did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we rewatched it last week, and I'm thinking like it's a hard what, watch. I think it, it it what an odd blend of like, oh, this is so cool. We've got three yes. Spider Man, and I love these little interactions, and there's a bunch of like powerful moments, and there's like so many great things. Yeah, and why why did they not put the same amount of passion into the plot as they do into like the like it's, the actual interactions? It was so weird. I don't know. It's so weird. And why why did they just save all the good stuff for the last 25 minutes? Like everybody was gonna be in love with these characters coming back. Make it the whole damn movie, you know? Make make we wanted to see these guys together for so long. Whatever. On to the uh, flash. Anyway, so so yeah. on to the flash. So all that to say, I put out my review from one of those early fan screenings that, oh, watch the flash and was like mm -hmm. really positive on it. Went to go see it opening night. It's like, no, I really I, like there started the buzz started to shift by opening night. And I was like, no, I think I really dug that. Yeah. And um, you know, the people I, I saw it with the kind of the fan meetup and they weren't as hot eye on the movie as I was, but they were still like, yeah, I, I dug that. And then the next two weeks on the internet, well, I guess the, next, the last two months on the internet have been like the crappiest movie of all time. It's a total disaster. It's a night. Like, and I'm oh, like, yeah, what? the what? Snyder, the <laughs> Snyder cult came happened? out. The like, Snyder what? cult came out. They and were they leaking like, that. They leaked that whole damn movie on Twitter. It and, was and I'm crazy. like, like doubting myself. I'm like, did I see a different movie? I was yeah. Like, I it's a that movie too. that like, I, like I watched it two times and it was like, there's an actual character arc for the central character. Yeah. There's like a really potent, mo uh, poignant movies or moments at the end of the movie where he's yeah. with his mother and having to make choices. They actually matter, matter in it. Like, um, and it, I, I've read Flashpoint before and the way that they incorporated the Flashpoint plot line into the DCEU, I thought was clever and smart. Um, and it, you know, it's not beat for beat, but it has the moments and it has the elements. And so I just thought it was like really well done. And the CGI sucks. <laughs> yeah, CGI. The CGI is terrible, but it doesn't it doesn't really detract from me outside of the babies looking yeah. horrendous. Yeah. But it's also one of those rare movies where they bring they dust off that cape for one last ride, Harrison Ford style, and they got Michael Keaton. And it's I think one of the only times they don't treat <clears throat> the guy like shit. They don't right. they don't make him a punchline or they don't make him die on a rock during a Skype call on a different planet while right. the you know well, it, it, it's they, they they introduce him the same way all the other ones do of like, he's got the beard and he's retired. Right. And then they give the reason he's retired. Gotham is a great city. Yeah. They literally think they, they, they're like, it's like a mission Batman accomplished 89. banner. <laughs> right? like, it's like the one Batman timeline where Batman succeeded. And so the reason that he's kind of lost is because he did it. They gave him yeah. the victory. Yeah. It's not like all the other ones. It's like, well, I, Han Solo, Indiana Jones, they're deadbeat dads. Right, they're, yeah. They're alcoholics. Oh, <laughs> and, my and God. Yeah, Han's still out there avoiding, you know, child <laughs> support payments and <laughs> smuggling. It'd be really funny if if uh, the camera, like, pans over and uh, the toilet flushes and Joker comes out, like, uh, you know, like, cleaning his hair. He's like, oh, hey, guys, what's going on? He's best friends with Bruce Wayne now. But oh, anyway, yeah, it's just, like, I, I watched it and I was like, yeah, you, you, like it had the fan service and it felt more earned. Um, and like I, that the there's a it's a bit odd in the third act where the final reveals make you be like, okay, like was everything we just did pointless or it's part of the character? It's a weird. It's kind of a weird way to crescendo your movie. 
to yeah. be like, we're going to undo this entire timeline. It's kind of yeah. weird and awkward. Like when you stop and think about it, that's fair. Um, CGI. I objectively, it's terrible, but if you buy into the movie, you don't care. And no. I bought into the movie. That's and exactly, so, that's where I'm at. Yeah. And, and I wonder, like, I've wondered how much of that is, is a, a certain generational aspect to it of if you're a little bit older and mm-hmm. you've lost some people and you have a little bit more of that thought of like, what if I got a little bit more time? Yeah. When you're 25, you're 20, that's not as, those thoughts don't cross your mind quite as much for as many people. Right. I don't think it's as common. So it's not as relatable. Michael it, Keaton yeah, it's, it's is not def- Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. So like some of those things just didn't connect with people. And so all of a sudden they're paying attention to the terrible CGI, which is, it is terrible. Yeah, like, nobody's arguing. I mean, I don't think there's a single person that's going to die on the hill and say, oh, Flash has like top tier. The, the, the director, you know, he, it was intentional. Yeah, they that meant, was it's hilarious. Supposed- <laughs> the director Worst comes out and he's like, oh time. no, it's supposed to be kind of like a fever dream through Flash's eyes. That's why the... The stuff looks unrendered and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why, there, that's, that's why there's pixels popping through the, no. Um, and that's why I, when he yeah. runs, it looks like he's doing this and just floating on top of the ground. Hey, I thought it was, at least it looks better than whatever the hell he's doing in those Zack Snyder movies. It, it, <laughs> I thought they fixed the run a little bit from that. I just don't think Ezra knows how, I don't think Ezra's ever ran a day in his life. And <laughs> I guess no one wanted to show him how. Or they how and, whatever. And right. after playing the part for however many years, still hasn't figured it out. Still hasn't <laughs> got there. Yep. Got to get him. Got to get a Nordic track at home. Mm-hmm. Run on that thing daily. We are at the. I mean, we're we're really done. Oh, I'm sorry. Where do you? I have this. Sean, Jonathan, I have this at number four. Okay, so we got a little bit of a uh, a paradox here. Oh paradox. my gosh. Um, on the notes in front of me. Kind of like the movie has a paradox a bit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. On the notes in front of me, mm-hmm. I have The Flash at number four. Okay. But because you were so positive on The Suicide Squad and I didn't want to seem too different from you, I said I put The Suicide Squad at number four and moved The Flash down because I was scared of my <laughs> honest opinion about the movie in light of how much it's been overhated. And I didn't want to be too negative on The Suicide Squad. So because of what I said earlier, I have to put The Flash at number five. My actual notes in front of me have it at number four. That's awesome. That is so. I'm glad that you even have that small level of respect for me to even think I would be shaming you. You're like, oh God, <laughs> he's been like raging on the DCEU. <laughs> he's going to destroy the Flash. The Flash. <laughs> it's like, no, what, I, like what, I'm trying to like look like count the numbers of like where is he going to have the Flash on here? Because like man, like Black Adam's <laughs> number four uh, on the list. Uh, so off ca- off camera, you have like all these charts and schematics and rubber bands pointing to things. Like oh no 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 where. where what is he doing here? I've actually just, I've just been lying about my order. Everything no. is like a seven or an eight. No. Okay. So, what do you, have, I, you had three for this or five for this? I can't remember what you said. No, you're four. Three, four, it, five? It, 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 so on my notes, it's a four, but because I put suicide squad at four, it's at five. Okay. But that's also like some of that recency bias. I haven't watched suicide squad in a little bit. And so the more recent film was the flash and, uh, but that's why I, I need to rewatch both of them, both The Flash, because like I've been doubting myself so much ever no, since. No, don't doubt yourself. <laughs> I've been, honestly, I've been, inc- you said you saw it twice already, right? Yeah, I saw it twice. Yeah, already. don't doubt yourself after two. I, I've been very excited to actually, I'm actually bummed out it's not on Max yet because mm-hmm. I went to this one, Stag, and I know my kids both wanted to see it. So I'm, I'm just waiting for it to come on Max because I'm actually excited to check no. it out again. I think it comes out in September, right? I'm surprised that they haven't already put it on. They Max. started push. They started pushing them back further. I guess they realized. Wait a second! When we How release the... them two weeks after the theatrical, people are or, starting to not go to the movie. Or on the same day. Or on the well, yeah, of course. Which for the was, entire year of 2021, we do the so same day. Ridiculous. There's consequences. Some dipshit comes into the uh, into the studio and he's like, "All right, hear me out. We release Kong versus Godzilla day in day on Max and in theaters. Mortal Kombat day one in theaters and HBO Max. Wonder Woman two 
like that person should be fired 10 times over because he lost that company a lot of money. Yeah. All right. We have, uh, are we done? Was that it? That's, I mean, we're caught up on all the, the ranking, but we got our blue beetle discussion. We got blue beetle. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's make this snappy. Cause I know it comes out tomorrow. I assume you're going tomorrow to watch it. I am. Are you taking the kids? Do, do the anybody whole, care? Whole family, whole family's going. Really? But we're, so we're big. Uh, well, Several of us are big Cobra Kai people, so it's the star Cobra Kai. So, um, oh, okay. I, I heard that show's really good. I never watched it. Yeah, it's it. Um, it's tough to like understand why it's so good from the trailers. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, but it, 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 um, you have especially in the first season, you have this very politically incorrect Johnny. Okay. And it, and it, and it does like this. It's, the same character arc as uh, same journey as the karate kid. Right. The Hillary except, Swank one, I assume. Of course. Yeah. Of course, except yeah. Johnny is the Mr. Miyagi. And so Johnny is like this politically incorrect kid of the eighties. And one point in time he gets some students and one of them was, I think I'm on the spectrum. And he goes, you better get off that right now. And he's like making fun of teenagers, like, like physical appearance and stuff. And it, oh and it just goes for it. Yeah. Um, but it's also like so it's, actually, a redem- it's a redemption arc, basically. But, but, but he's a jerk, but he actually cares about them. But it's like very much he it starts off as an alcoholic that's a deadbeat dad. Sure. And he's discovering how to be a better father, both being, being the surrogate father to this one kid, as well as he has his own son. And then you have uh, Daniel LaRusso has turned into like this middle aged douchebag that is using his, his karate kid reputation to like sell cars and like he's just <laughs> like, like totally, awesome. out of, totally out of touch and he's kind of lost his way. And sure. so you're they're, they're both kind of jerks, but they're both kind of right in their own ways. And it, 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 it you know, knows how to do all the serialized melodrama just sure. right. And so you're like, it, it works so much better than it should. And then by the time you get to the second season, you're just getting wrapped up into this whole world. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, um, I, I've, I've just thoroughly enjoyed the entire run. So, certain nice. seasons are better than others. There's definitely times where you're like, come on now, we're stretching this out. Come on yeah. now. But, um, and they find ways to like make the Karate Kid 3 better. They like they find ways like they pull in characters from the like bad really? movies and and like they, they like pulled in most of the characters from Karate Kid Three followed plot lines up from that and like like um do you, do you remember Karate Kid Three? Uh, I just remember Hillary Swank is in it. And, That's and the I fourth one. It. That's four. What? Yeah. So there's the first one, of course. The second one, they go to Japan. They go to Japan, and he the has the, one, like he like slaps the guy around. Yeah. Yeah. So then that guy comes back in 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 some episodes, or he has actually comes back for a whole season. But so the third one is like a rehash of the first movie. But they had this character named to- Terry Silver, okay. who's like an who's like an evil Cobra Kai guy that um is like a stereotype of a uh, evil businessman. <laughs> And it it the, the guy playing Terry Silver is supposed to be a Vietnam vet, but in real yeah. life he's a year younger than um Ralph Raccio, Macchio. Sure. So he's supposed to be playing this guy that's 20 years older than the karate kid. In real life, he's younger than him. Beautiful. And, it, and so it's like he's clearly not old enough to be playing this character. He does look older than Ralph, but like uh, he's like on the phone and he's like just bury the toxic waste in the middle door. <laughs> I, I, remember that. I remember that now that you say and, that. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. we're going to make so much money. It's like so over the top. And in Cobra Kai, he's like, he, he has these interactions with people. He's like, man, I can't go back into this world of karate, man. Back then, I was hopped up on so much cocaine. I was out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like they call they out rogue, all the They rogue won it. They rogue yeah. won it. They find yeah, these they, ways they to make... explain why there's a... a, a, a Ridiculous deep, uh, plot yeah. points and oh, stuff. Yeah. We should probably cover this vent that can blow up the whole thing with a shield or something. Oh, there's no time, John. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds amazing. I assume that Jaden Smith reprises his role as well from the definitive version of The Karate Kid? Well, the show hasn't finished its run. Each season, they bring new people in. Okay. So we haven't seen Jaden yet, and we haven't seen Hillary Swank yet. Hmm. And apparently, uh, um, 
I guess she was pregnant over the last couple of years or some window in there. So they keep trying to get her. They keep trying to find a way to make her have an appearance in the show. Well, but all that to say, uh, even my, my daughter is like, she's like, that's one of those. Sh- she shouldn't be watching it. It's not for, for elementary school age kids. Well, Sean, it's, because- honestly, it sounds like no one should be watching it. It sounds pretty sexist <laughs> and racist, if you ask me. I'm not, su- not supporting some of these characters. <laughs> It's, it's pretty overtly sexist and racist at times. <laughs> and that's why I'm so shocked that the show hasn't had any like pushback because like that it hasn't been canceled. There hasn't been any sort of anything on Twitter because the, the first season they um yeah they go um, all in. Yeah, they, they allow the star of the show with the redemptive arc to be all the things you're not allowed to be <laughs> in the real world. This, now. In the real world right now. <laughs> this is the exact stuff that Twitter's like, how dare they make that joke? It's because That's it's not ableist. like a, I think it's because it's not a Disney property. So yeah. people aren't feigning outrage for no reason. Yeah. All right, let's go to, okay. So blue beetle, you are, you guys are jazzed about this then because of the actor, basically, I assume. Yeah. And not because it looks pretty terrible. <laughs> It, I mean, it, it looks, um, the trailers make it seem very much in the vein of uh, the mediocrity of Shazam 2, Black Adam of like, yeah, it's yeah. fun enough. There's, There's a little jokes, bit of a Shang-Chi action. action mixed in, yeah. although I, I like Shang-Chi quite a bit, but this um, this doesn't look very good. It, but there's even stuff like... Um, he cuts a butt bus in half, which is yeah, a really a, specific, a thing, really specific thing to do. They cut a bus in half last year in Doctor Strange too. Yes, and so like something like that, they're like so specific. And they cut a bus in half in Shang Chi, just going the you know the other the direction. other the other way. Yeah. And so it's like it's a really specific thing to like. I haven't ridden a bus in. 20 years like it's not like a, like a bus is a common thing in many parts of the country there's like more the, buses getting ripped in half in these movies than there are plane crashes in suicide squad right right, there are right. three helicopter crashes in that film <laughs> right <laughs> so in the course I, of a half hour three helicopter crashes it I, I don't know if you make anything of this but like the early reactions were like all positive no i don't Which, those are all bullshit yeah I, I, I assume you probably would be like, oh, cool, the early reactions? Man, I'm buzzed jazz for it now. I can't wait. I, I, I actually do a segment, and I noticed you, you do it too. I assumed you copied me, which is fine, because um, I'm, you know, I'm obviously the forefront of YouTube and everything that they do. I do a segment on the live once in a while where I go through the Twitter. I call them the fake reactions. Obviously, they can be real. My, my stance is if the movie's not out for another month and a half, when these movie reactions come out and I look at the profile on 70% of them and they're complete like Stan fanboys of that specific property or that group yeah. odds are they're not the kind of person I'm really going to listen to for a judgment call. No. And um, they may have credible takes, you know, like the movie might be fun and explosive and exciting, but they're never going to have a bad take on these right. early reactions. It's always, super positive with maybe one little sprinkling of a uh, half-assed negative criticism. So that, that's, that's where I'm at on it. But yes, you're right. The, the early buzz is, is very, very good. Yeah. I, I, it's tricky because like being in the world of criticism and stuff and getting to go to the early screenings and I'm not like in LA where you see stuff way early, yeah, but I've right. seen it before it comes out. Um, and you, you have this side of the internet that they're all paid off and critics of this <laughs> and, this, and it's like, that's definitely not the way this works, no, but it's no. also, there is a, there is a side to it of corruption when mm-hmm. you get into the, the influencer side to it of yes. where you're invite getting invited to certain events, specific types of premieres and things like that. And um, you're invited to cover it positively. Correct. You get goodie um, bags, you get access to yeah. further screeners, yeah. you get good, good favors with Disney or whoever. Right. It, it's 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 pretty easy to spot, honestly. And yeah, obviously there's going to be a, a Sean Chandler mixed in once in a while with the early reactions. But I don't think even you go to those ones. You go to the the more like professional right. I, I, critic like I'm screeners. Press screening, actual yeah, press, screening press screening here in Austin. Austin. These um, are not the same thing. Um, yeah. You're thinking like you're going to the world premiere of the film. Yes. So you're like going to an event and you're 
standing there, Dwayne the Rock Johnson walks by and he's like, hey, what a selfie. And he, they, exactly. Do you think you're going to have a bad night if Dwayne the Rock Johnson just took a selfie with you? Right. No, like no, John, that- John Campia goes to those and I don't ever listen to anything he says based on that like i saw you on the red carpet taking photos with tom holland i'm pretty sure you're gonna love the film he was right. in and so the you factor that there's people that are watching it in the best possible context and one of the reasons they're getting invited is because they tend to be very right. positive on these things right. and the part where it's, you start getting into real complicated stuff is we're in a world where influencer critic there's too much overlap there's overlap. Yeah. Um, and there's quite a bit of overlap. And it's the I, the first time ever I've I've had overt overlap for me is that uh, I had I was reached out to from Warner Brothers to go see an influencer screening of Blue Beetle tomorrow night, and I was in there and it was like we need you to post th- three Instagram pictures yep. real, and it was like you're covering the event. Yeah, you're you're talking about it a lot, and I was also invited to the press screening, and so I like I was like I'm. And I got invited to the influencer one first. I was like, I'm not going to RSVP to that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a press screening. So then I RSV to the press screen. I was like, I'm, I'm a critic. I'm not an influencer. Like right. I, I'm a critic. Um, but there's that overlap. And so you have people that they write tweets really wanting to get the pull quote. Yep. It's always the pull quote. And you, um, and it's, it's really tough. Cause you don't want to like, there's like, like all my friends have had poll quoted things before. I've never been poll quoted because anytime I put out a tweet, it's always, this is great. This is great. But, mm-hmm. and even as someone that's too positive, even as you can see here, too positive. I enjoy some of these movies too much. I have too much fun with them. I'm trying to be fair, even in my fanboyism. So right. say, this is really good, but some people might like, and I have that always have that other thing to try and be fair and balanced to, all you, all the people that aren't just too jazzed about these movies like me, that have a little, maybe a little bit more of a cynical side to it. Like, yeah. I want to be able to give a recommendation that filters out my fanboyisms that's useful. Mm-hmm. Warner Brothers doesn't read mine and go, that one right there. Let's pull quote that guy. That's, that's our guy. That's that's making. He is clearly a fan of it, but he also is being honest. (laughs) He's He's, being balanced in his take on it. And he's not using hyperbole. He's not using great buzzwords that pull quote. And so and and so is the little mermaid. So and so is is capital I S is the, the, the most stock generic things I could possibly ever see. My favorite, whatever, I forget the guy's name, but uh, there's a guy that back, five, six years ago, whenever they started really doing these influencer mm-hmm. pull quotes, and then they do the articles where they pull all the first reactions. Yep. He was like, they're not even reading what people are writing. No. And so then he writes these reactions. He hasn't seen the movie and he just writes one sent uh, two sentences that are the stock, like, this is a true work of art. This movie <laughs> proves that comic book movies can be real movies too. Batman wants out the movie with no pants on and you can see his dog. It's the best <laughs> comic book movie of all time. And he lit- it's literally that overt of That's like awesome. two sentences that are just the cliche. Right, right. Nonsense. Just the boilerplate. Just boilerplate. And then the third sentence is always something that just anybody, like it's there so. There was a guy like- blowing chunks next to me during the movie. <laughs> And then it closes out with another boilerplate sentence. And it was so funny because every single time these roundup articles would yeah. snatch him, throw them in there. And he's side by side with all of the usual suspects with their, their ones so posting good. that stuff. And then you have this guy saying just crazy stuff. That's awesome. I, um, yeah. All that to say, I'm really excited for Blue Peter. <laughs> you won me over. You won me over. No, I don't have any. I don't know who this character is, which sometimes is a is a pro, kind of like with Guardians. I didn't know any of that. I'm not like a big comic book person, so you know, like I, I'm I'm a little down on DCEU, but I love a lot of movies. It's not just it's just not superhero stuff is my forte as much. Um, I'll go to it, of course, and uh, you know, sometimes I going in with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder or maybe thinking it's not going to be great turns out for the best i remember seeing speed racer in theaters and that movie was just getting shellacked when it went out terrible reviews i took my wife kicking and screaming 
and we freaking loved Speed Racer. So, so we could have a Speed Racer situation for Blue Beetle. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's going to make money? I don't... The last couple DCEU movies have Maybe. bombed severely. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, excuse me, sir. Oh. Excuse me. James Gunn said that Blue Beetle is the first DCU hero. He uh, said that, sir. So this is not DCEU. This is DCU. This is this is if the movie makes money, Blue Beetle's DCU. If it loses <laughs> money, money, James Gunn never said that. I think and he's the, just he's just keeping his eggs in a couple baskets. Yeah, you know he wants to be able to move forward, obviously, with this film. But then we also have Aquaman two coming out. Yeah. What is going? Is James Wan directing that one? Yeah, he yeah. Is well, I mean. So, so, like, I I know two guys that watched Aquaman 2 April of last year at a test screening. Two different people. And at that point in time, uh, I believe Michael Keaton was in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then they did reshoots. They put Ben Affleck in the movie. And so then they did a new set of test screenings. And then they removed all Batman from the movie. Sure. And they <laughs> did another round of test screenings. And so it's a movie that uh, in not quite a Suicide Squad or Justice League kind of way, but yeah. it, it's the same crap. It's getting and band-aided so together. That there, It's a movie that, first off, Aquaman way overperformed. It mm-hmm. shouldn't have made a billion dollars, obviously. It shouldn't be the highest grossing DC movie of all time. That's weird. I would compare and it sh- to Captain Marvel in terms right, of right, box right, office revenue. Right, like this movies that just the right moment, the right time, right time, it's right place. Yeah, weird how well it did. Yeah, the sequel should have been re- like James Wan. You can make seven malignant movies if you rush out this movie while the iron is still hot. Please right. make this movie, but <laughs> instead it's five years later. Yeah, and even the movie like they shot like I just took like people they were doing test screenings. A year and a half ago, and the movie doesn't come out for another six months. And there hasn't so, been a, a, a teaser or anything. Yeah, I think we've right. seen one single shot, and I don't even know if it's real. It might be right. just a Photoshop for well, all and I know. T- two years ago, at uh, DC Fandom, they put out a behind-the-scenes deal. Yeah. Two years ago, and we don't have a trailer yet. So it's just so weird. Uh, so um, they're gonna they're gonna like do the Simpsons on this Aquaman two, and the end of Blue Beetle is gonna be a end credit scene, and they're gonna have Aquaman say, "Okay, I'm going to my home planet now," and then they'll put <laughs> Aquaman died returning to the Atlantis, and that'll be it. They won't even release it. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, but they, I, they I, that's the, it just um, waiting too long to put it out. Announcing you're resetting the universe anyway, when we all know. Wait, you've got a, you've got a year's worth of movies that yeah. you shot, yeah. and you didn't shoot them. You didn't write them or shoot them to be the end. Yeah, overtly, you you didn't do that. And you know, before the Flash comes out, they're like, oh yeah, I mean, if it makes a uh, seven hundred million dollars, we're going to do a sequel. What are you talking about? You're resetting the universe. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, well, so Gun Gun did say something in this again. I think this was hedging his bets. Um, he did say in that announcement video he put out, you know, like six months ago or whatever, how he was taking over and he had all these big plans. One of the things he said was Snyder's universe is still very much intact and it's going to be called Elseworlds. Didn't he say that? Elseworlds or other worlds. Basically, it was him going, listen, we're, we're moving forward with what I got going on. But if for some magical reason, these movies start making a bunch of money like The Flash because it was great, he said. He'll just keep going with those too. And, and they'll have like the Batman two coming out and then they'll have the Snyder stuff coming out and then they'll have the, you know, the, the James Gunn stuff and everybody will be happy. But yeah, these are bombing. So I don't, I don't see that happening. Yeah. I don't, I don't imagine it's going to happen. I'm putting on a little show for the comment section that are curious about what I'm drinking. Oh, we didn't. Yeah. We, so yeah. you I tried to have a, a, you can learn a lot about a person's character based on what they're drinking. I have a, a good old fashioned Coke on the rocks. That's my go-to. I, I literally built a monument of, of sodas oh before we started filming. So I'd have like a, you know, sure. nice display here. And then because of the way this is cropping things, it, it didn't, you could barely even tell yeah. my, my 
diet soda addiction problem I have, but you're a diet soda guy. That's interesting. <sighs> uh, it's because I drink so much of it and I'm getting old enough that and vain enough that I don't want to let myself go. So that's I mean, I've problem. heard, I've heard that the diet is just as bad, if not worse than, than regular sugar, sugar water. Yeah, but it doesn't have calories. So even oh, if it's, that- it's going to destroy my system and give me kidney stones, but at least it doesn't have calories. It doesn't have the calories. <laughs> like, calories are a myth. It's not real. Dry land's a myth. I've seen yeah, my- it. <laughs> Dry land's not a myth. I've seen it. My uh, mother and sister desperately ridicule me for drinking diet soda. <laughs> wow. I mean, it just, you're just a, you're a secure man. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I used to be big into Fresca years ago. Wow. So anyway, yeah, as soon as we finish, I'm going to yeah. go downstairs and have a big bowl of ice cream. Yeah, that would be great. I do yeah. like a nice like, with sugar, like a snack of cereal. I'm a big uh, apple. Je- uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Uh, apple cinnamon Cheerios guy myself. Nice little meal. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Blue Beetle, you you're super jazzed. It's probably going to be your favorite DCEU movie from what I'm gathering because you have a, a bias because of yes. the actor from the show. Yes. I think it's probably going to be uh, yeah. a hot, messy shit, but we'll see. It could be great. Yeah. I, how long is um, it? How long is it? Wait, how long is this movie? Please tell me it's under two. I am I am begging you to be under two hours. There's no they don't put that on Letterbox. That's kind of disappointing. Wikipedia says 127 minutes, two hours, seven minutes. 127 hours. Um, movie's already at a 7.9 on IMDb, so that's that's legit. Yeah, two hours and seven minutes. We had to just skirt over that two hour mark, didn't we? No. Had to just punish me more. Okay, well, yeah, I'm not I'm not thrilled. I don't think it's gonna do well. I think it's gonna bomb. Uh, I know they're really pushing the whole, you know, first Latin superhero. That's great. I'm all for that. But I still need the movie to be good. Right. Uh, the representation stuff doesn't mean dick if your movie's not good. Right. Outside of that, yeah. Uh, let's go to, do you want to stick around for Q&A or are you going to go have some ice cream? Uh, I, I'm, I don't have anywhere to be. Okay. <laughs> I'm unemployed, so <laughs> I can sleep in tomorrow as late as this, I want. Uh, sadly, I I have to work tomorrow. But I work from home though, so it's not not terrible. All right, let's go to the. So I've uh, uh, I've been watching through the Wrong Turn movies, and, oh. and, which it's sorry, it's probably the worst franchise of all time. Just yeah. sh- shockingly bad movies and, um, almost intentionally painful to watch. Just awful, awful, awful. Are they, well, so there's by, several I spit on your grave movies. I don't oh, know. If wow. You, yeah. I, I haven't gone down was, that path, was, but that, the first one was trash, so I didn't even go to the other ones. So by oh, talking to you, I'm going to be able to avoid having to watch a wrong turn movie afterwards. That's so. See, that's nice. How many there's, are there? There are seven wrong turn movies. There's no way they went to theaters. How many of them went to theaters? Two. One, two? two, okay. So the the first one, of course, that um, you know, it's it's a fine product of its time slasher film with Elijah sure. Dushku, so that's fun. Sure. Um, and then they did like a small release for a remake one that they put out a year or two ago. Wronger, wronger turn, the wrong turn. <laughs> so it's like a reimagining. So it's actually like a, a pretty different plot, but the same. Uh oh, you turned the wrong place and you found weirdos. And there's five direct to video sequels that are unbelievably bad. Just or 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 probably as as bad as you'd imagine they would be because you wouldn't be stupid enough to watch any of them. I've watched all of them. You're a glutton for punishment. Yeah. Yeah. I have a ranking idea for you, actually, Sean. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I think you'll, I seriously think it's a good one. I don't know if you've done it before, but you should do a ranking on the top worst movie franchise. Uh, I don't even know how to title this. You're, you're the good one at this, but basically the worst naming conventions in trilogies. So you'd have like the mm-hmm. Fast and the Furious, Fast, Too Fast, Too Furious. Uh, you'd have Halloween, followed by Halloween, which is actually <laughs> Halloween 2, which is a sequel to Halloween, but not the other sequel to Halloween. You know, you have the Predator, Predators, Predator, 
uh, th- I mean, the world is really your oyster with this, and I think yeah. you could, I think you could have fun with it. So the uh, that feels like that would be a tier ranking of the bad oh, names. Oh, sure, so, yeah, a tier so, ranking would be good. So then you say of franchises with the worst naming conventions. Yeah, it, yeah, like tier ranking franchise best and yes. worst. John Maybe. Wick, I would put um, somewhere in the middle because they're just that's a shit show too. Because you have John yeah. Wick, John Wick Chapter Two. Then for some reason, John Wick Parabellum. Parabellum, <laughs> one of those one of those highly relatable words that normal people like Parabellum. I love right. Parabellum. It's like my favorite word. Parabellum. <laughs> Very useful word for. Me. And then they just went back to John Wick Chapter Four because yeah. they're like, well, where do we go from Parabellum? Yeah. No, no word can top it. We we peaked with Parabellum. We peaked at Parabellum. Yeah, Fast and the Furious obviously S tier because of just the, the brilliance of that naming structure. Um, yeah, I think you could have fun with that. Okay, let's see what we got. We have uh, Tony from Hack the Movies. So he's got a good channel over there. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, Sean, but uh, Hack the Movies, they they used to be part of Cinemassacre uh, with Angry, Angry Video Game Nerd. You remember him? Mm-hmm. Angry Video Game Nerd. He was a thing. Yeah, so Tony worked on Cinemassacre, and then he branched off and did Hack the Movies. I've been on there several times. I love the Adam Does Movies live show, exclamation mark for $2. Yeah, because that's how he started. Sean was here. You know, he's kind of a, he's kind of a big deal in the space. So I was a little, cons- I was a little scared, a little timid, you know, <laughs> didn't know how to talk for a while. You know, when uh, Cody's been on twice and I call him Corey constantly, because <laughs> I, used to have, I used to actually do this show with a coworker back in the day for many years. His name was Corey. So it's just like this awful Freudian slip. Hack the Movies is back again, promoting his channel brilliantly with the $5 super chat. I always say our child's name will be Adam Does Movies, and wow. girls always go, this is our first date. Who is Adam? Hmm. <laughs> okay. That was a nice walk. Uh, thanks, Tony. Make sure to go subscribe to Tony at Hack the Movies. Nada for $1.99. Thoughts on Ryan Gosling, rumored to play Bat... Man, what? Baby Goose is rumored to play Batman in what? Yeah. Batman Brave and the Bold. Oh, really? The well, so first off, I, I think this is one of those just, you yeah, know, we've got this something. covered. Uh like one of those websites that a that, website makes it up and then seven other websites report on the made yeah. up thing. And they're like, well, look at all these websites yeah, reporting yeah. on it. But it's, like, real. It, it's one of those um this is not anything remotely close to a real thing well let's pretend uh, because it is. what so, would you think what would you think uh, if it was real so i don't see it at all i don't, I don't like either. i don't remotely see ryan gosling as batman um you know he's done kind like, of he starts like tap dancing <laughs> through a scene it, like he's done drive and he's done brooding things and he, he can get into shape but just even on like his his face yeah, his, I, can kind of see of... The, I can kind of see the cowl. I can kind of see the mouth. He's got a good, he's got that kind of like rippled lip look, Michael Keaton style. Yeah, I don't, I... <laughs> this pyramid of drinks. This drink amid. But yeah, I, um, I, I just don't see him like as Bruce Wayne. I, I just don't, I don't see it at all. Yeah. Um, it, like of all the people out there, I just don't. See Sean, no you have, this is completely unrelated, but do you use your same streaming camera that you use your show camera? Are they mm-hmm. two different cameras? Same camera. What, what, are, you, what are you using? Uh, this is a Sony A6400. Oh, I it's actually, a nice camera. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 for a long time, had a Canon M50. Yeah. And that's what I, and I, I actually, back when I bought the Canon M50, I was like, going think should i get the a6400 yeah. just you have to buy the lenses separate and everything so it's like the extra cost is like mm, i don't and i only got this one so that i could um do live streaming with yes. uh, not just like a logitech webcam and mm. the first time i hooked it up and did one shot without setting the settings i was like oh no this is my camera for everything now <laughs> like it just a, instantly a, took over it's a beautiful camera and yeah. it, it like your picture quality is great i love the the soft focus on mm-hmm. both the foreground and the background i appreciate that i uh, yeah yeah my buddy had a sony camera and he was saying how it does you can do live streaming with it i'm like that's poppycock i have a fucking canon rebel 7i old school and that doesn't do you got to have that thing battery operated is such a pain in the butt but yeah you can 
that Sony charges right into the camera, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I get, I have the, the camera is pretty much always just hardwired on a stick above my monitor That's cable awesome. coming out of it into a cam link. And it's, it's just, that's how I do everything. That's nice. I, I prefer kind of like seat of your pants, setting up every time, just a complete shit show, like the mics falling on me, cameras, uh, insanity. Yeah, that, that's where I like to live. I did a lot of that until about a yeah. year ago when it's like, got this thing and it's like, this is, well, actually, that's not even entirely true. Um, all the way up until um, the beginning of this year, I had the tripod when I'd shoot my videos here in yeah. front of my monitor, like literally this awkward clunky setup. That's what I and have. Through, <laughs> and through this, through this, uh, I, I did a, I was, I was able real rejects. Greg from real rejects invited me over to his house to be on a live stream. I was like, what Greg from real rejects? They got a yeah. million subscribers and did this live stream. And it was like the simplest of things. He just had like a, just a little bar that put the camera above the, the monitor. I was like, Oh, well, that makes more sense. Yeah. It's, it's like the sort of thing that's like not brilliant at all. It's yeah. just you see someone that you know, knows what they're doing. And yeah. so I bought, bought one of those and all of a sudden my desk doesn't have a tripod in the middle of it anymore. That's awesome. Yeah. You'll have to share that link with me because I'm doing this the tripod thing instead of ha I have like duct taped lights on the walls and no, not that bad, but it's it's yes. it's 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 embarrassing. So whenever I stumbled on this setup, like I just have this one key light right here mm -hmm. and then this camera that actually has good color pickup with vibrant yeah. colors and it doesn't get washed out by me shooting lights behind it to give me backlighting. Uh, I just everything Sony's always nice Sony's here. always made really good cameras. Always been a fan of theirs. Anyway, um, Nada, yeah, thank you, Nada, for the super chat. Sorry, we don't have more exciting news to offer as far as Baby Goose as Batman. I don't, I, I've been, like, there's been too many times where they make a casting choice. I'm like, oh, that's stunt casting. Colin Farrell is the penguin. Like, I keep it to myself because almost every time it works out and it's actually yeah. a really good decision. So I actually, I, I, I give it up to the, uh, except for, I take that back. Tom Holland as Nathan Drake was a terrible choice. Yeah. But for the most part. But that, that, yeah. That, that was one that they just clearly, they didn't. It's that's Sony. In -house it's Sony. <laughs> Sony has Spider-Man. Spider-Man is Tom Holland. That's all they know. And, and so they're, they're, everything leads back to Spider-Man with us. And even the, the weirder part is it goes back like 10 years that they've had, you know, they've been trying to do this Uncharted movie. And 10 years ago, it was, Wahlberg was going to yeah, be Drake. Wahlberg. And then they went, mm, we don't want to lose you. So why don't we also miscast you as Sully? I never liked him as Drake either, but yeah, it would have been better than freaking. Tom right. Holland. It would have made more sense than yeah. him as Sully. Uh, both of those are miscast, but yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. Jan Rose with $2 says Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. That's right. Well, she was, I don't know if she is anymore, but I get what you put down, Jan. Thank you. Seems like they don't know either. <laughs> With the <sighs> contradictory rumors. I just, Gal, Gadot, Gal Gadot's turning into Dwayne Johnson where they have this, um, yeah. you know, they're like, if I say it, maybe it'll actually happen. Dwayne Johnson's like, no, no, Black Adam's doing great. It's the number one movie in America. We're going to have a bunch of them. It's fired the next day. Uh, what do we got here? Jane Rose. Uh, I always say Jane. Jan Rose. Back again. $5 super chat. Thank you. Justice League is one of the worst superhero movies I've ever seen. And what a shame, too, because I loved Justice League growing up. She's being vague. I don't know if she's talking about the Snyder Cut or the Joss Whedon one. I'm going to assume she means the Snyder Cut. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds accurate. <laughs> Shadow Humor with $5. Thank you, Shadow Humor. Blade is still my favorite superhero movie. Hell yes. Hey, uh, Sean, I'm sure you've ranked them, but quickly, Blade, where where do you stand? What's your favorite? Trinity, I assume? Uh, So I, I think Trinity is a very fun, terrible movie. It's, it it's, and, it's, and, it's terrible and especially movie. once you watch the interviews with Patton Oswalt talking about his time making the movie and Wait, uh, is in that. Oh man. You haven't watched it. I, I've seen Blade I, Trinity when it went to theaters and I never looked back, yes. but I don't remember him in there. Yeah. He's a, uh, one of the night stalkers. Oh. That's like, he's like the guy in the chair. Okay. That's I know like, Parker Posey's in there and yeah. uh, there's mm -hmm. like dogs with mouths that open yeah. like those reavers, which I was mm -hmm. done at that point. I'm like, this is, 
Yeah. This is terrible. So, um, but yeah, Patton Oswalt is in it, and there's some interviews of him talking about it. The guy's like, "So you're in Blade? Uh, is that exciting?" He's like, "No, no, no, no. I wish I was in Blade. Blade's awesome. I'm in Blade Trinity." <laughs> He's doing this before the movie comes out? <laughs> no, no, this is oh, oh, okay. I was going to say, oh my God. <laughs> it's after the movie came out and he goes, awesome. man, that movie was a disaster. And I'm friends with the director. He'll agree with you. Everything was a disaster. Wesley Snipes went crazy. And he was in his, his, his trailer smoking weed all the time. And he would, would demanded people call him Blade. And he wouldn't talk to the director. He would just write cards to, to, to communicate with the director. <laughs> Which is funny because he only had like 40 some lines of dialogue in the movie. So you'd think but, he'd want to talk more when he wasn't filming. But but so that's because he wouldn't show up. He was supposed to have more dialogue, so but funny. he wouldn't show up. And so a lot of the, his stunt double shot half of his stuff and they did wide shots. <laughs> the, the, it, the last shot in the movie is him laying on a, on a on a bed and he refused to open his eyes. And so they CGI'd eyes opening onto him. No, <laughs> what? You can look this up. Last shot, I like CGI eyes, and he's in a morgue, and you just see like the worst CGI eyes. Open. That is awesome. <laughs> because Wesley Snipes sabotaged his own film because oh he, he was like really. You know, I know he didn't it. want. I know he didn't like that they added Jessica Biel and, and Ryan Reynolds. And, yeah, uh, yeah. That's so, so then good. he he just tanked it. Yeah, he's done. That's freaking gold well that movie sucked either way but yeah that's that's a shame anyway, but blade one and two are pretty well tied for me oh, um, yeah that, that I, I agree i tend I like to two more. i like two a little bit more but I, I think i like one a little bit more because mm -hmm. i like the investigation aspect of it where you're kind of like learning about this world sure. and the familiars whereas the second one's a little bit more streamlined but i think i i appreciate the fact that it's very different so it complements it without competing yes. with it I love the um, well. I love Del Toro and his right. his kind of vision that he puts on things. But I, I'm a huge fan of that 2007 ish um, CG transition to real human thing. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Do. It's so fun. I wish they did it more. I mean, they did it yeah. in a lot of the Spider Man movies. You know, he'll come down in a real pose and then he'll like jump fast. Jump and, just, and they always, they always like speed it up because they're <laughs> trying to mask how you know unpolished it is. But yeah. Blade Two was the king of that. There was so yes. many different. It was like like early enough in that process of doing that where you're seeing like real people doing sword fights and mm -hmm. it's Wesley Snipes and it's so clearly him as a real martial arts doing cool stuff. Yes, and he's then like, he does like this like double backflip, <laughs> double backflip, <laughs> flies ten feet up in the air. Oh, the shot when he he runs and he does that like spiral flip onto the motorcycle then pulls yeah. out the like zip line thing oh that's so good i love that movie those movies are awesome thank you Shad uh, who brought that up shadow humor thank you for bringing that up kyle nelson with the 199 nothing just silent he's like i feel bad for you here's some money shut up nice. thank you kyle oh but then he's back now he has something to say oh, with the 499 super <laughs> the first one was a test and now he's ready the next Friday the 13th is in October. That makes sense. What is your fit? That makes more sense than releasing Haunted Mansion in August. What is your favorite Friday the 13th? Is, I, I, that's for either of us to go. I'm, I'm not uh, going to lie to you. I haven't seen many of them in a long time. And the first one I watched a few years back on Rocktober with my family and it really has aged pretty poorly for me. The the original Friday the Thirteenth. The original Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, it, it's it's absolutely not a classic. No, um, it like it's overtly a Halloween. They were the writer was told well, go watch Halloween and find a cheap way to do that. Like just do yeah, that cheap. I, I um, just wasn't into it. I think uh, uh, six is the one where they realized this is stupid, and so it's self aware. Okay, and so it delivers all the kills and what that you want, but it like has some humor and self and on its own joke. Uh, and then I, I like some people hate it, but the the remake, um, yeah, it's not like this is a great film, but none of the none of the movies in this franchise are kinda, like, don't they turn him into like a pedophile in the remake? That was the one thing I think people no no, no that, that was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I'm sorry, Nightmare yeah, on Elm Street was like oh. Oh yeah, they, they, yeah, that's right. That's what it was. So Friday the thirteenth, it's um, 
you know, it it adds some, you know, Mike because it's Platinum Dune, some goofy teenage humor mm-hmm. into it, and they're they're smoking dope the whole time. But like it, it just has a better aesthetic to it, mod twenty first century production value, and get people getting chopped up, and then yeah. So. And that's number six. Well, there you go. Kyle. No, no, there's no, no. So oh. six is back in the eighties. The remake is from two thousand nine. So those are the two that I I had normally as the top. I think. Gotcha. Well, there you go. Two, two for the price of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watermelon. What is it? Barnacle. Watermelon barnacle 499. Thank you. And then of course, appropriately a watermelon barnacle photo, I guess. I've been watching Adam since 2015 and Sean since 2019. This collab was been well awaited. That's verbatim. I, I assume he meant was well weighted. Thank you very much. I'm, I hope that it didn't disappoint. Yeah. Well, and we've been going for three hours, so this has been if there's an, something uh, yeah. something we've missed. Let us know that we can do our our little show for you guys. And the now that it's after midnight and I'm tired and uh, my inhibition's gone, I can do something. What, some, whatever I would normally not say or do, I can let I can just let loose now. The yeah. halo is off. Yeah. So, hey, let's um let's debate turning red real quick. Oh that's God! <laughs> that was your worst take ever. Turning red. That was, it's, it's like, I didn't connect okay, to the okay. little girls in the film. Shut up, John. <laughs> I'm gonna get off Twitter for the next two weeks. What have I done? <laughs> oh my God! Uh, Kyle Nelson's back, baby. Four ninety nine. I double dog dare you to tell us which '80s movie is as gay <laughs> as a fanny pack. What? Anything with John Travolta, I would assume. I'm trying to think, like uh, Saturday Night Fever. What year was that? That's seventies. That's disco. Oh, that's that's it's like seventy eight, I think. They did a sequel though. That yeah, Stallone wrote and directed called Staying, Alive. Staying Alive. Yeah, yeah. Staying Alive. Well, there, that's probably it. That's probably uh, the one. Uh, yeah, Top Gun with that volleyball scene. And <laughs> you know, I had never seen Top Gun until. I mean, I saw it how. Like, I, I oh. saw it when I was a kid with my okay. dad, so I don't count that because I don't remember shit from it. And so I watched it before Maverick came out. I love Maverick, by the way. But Top Gun, I, I just... And I'd seen Hot Shots probably 500 times, so I wasn't yeah. familiar enough with it based on that. But yeah, <laughs> Top Gun, I was just not feeling at all. I thought, wow, this movie is very, very homoerotic. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like equal parts <laughs> waiting for these guys to throw fists as they are to make out with each other. And uh, yeah, the sexual tension was palpable in it. They should have just gone all in on it, honestly, because that was that was some funny stuff. And That's Iceman's just... the Iceman's the the hero in the movie. Tom Gun, uh, Tom Gun, Tom Gun's character. He's the villain. He's the villain. Tom Gun. Yeah, he's the yeah, villain of the picture. So I'm a little bit, you know, more nostalgic. Watch. That's one of the first movies I remember watching. Yeah, first earliest childhood memories of watching a movie is watching Top Gun, and my parents uh, gets to the. Uh, take my breath away sequence and my parents are like hey get out of here real quick it's like what's going on what just happened in the movie and then uh, <laughs> they're trying to distract you <laughs> hey hey <laughs> like hey. what's going on here Woo. um it's so got tons of nostalgia for it but yeah it's such an 80s product mm-hmm. and then top gun maverick like somehow makes like this really like solid blockbuster that's a follow-up yeah, they does every stopped, rebooted it and they did it right the second time. Yeah, right. It's like, wow. How did, how did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get a, an actress that looks a little closer to Tom Cruise's age, not one that looks like the mom in the first film. We're going to we're going to make some actual cool dogfight sequences with a plot that I can understand. The first movie, I don't even know what the fuck they're doing. They're just training. <laughs> they're training. And then out of nowhere something yeah. happens. So, uh, yeah, he, he he maybe graduates, he maybe does it and they're like, "Hey, there's bad guys out in the ocean." <laughs> <laughs> and so then we'd like rush over, head it up and he's like having a nervous breakdown. Oh, I don't know. I'm like, can I do this? Can I do this? And then he does and he saves the day against Someone, someone that the mix, yeah. mix. Yeah. <laughs> but that song, you got Kenny Loggins in there. Yeah. Okay, song. where am I? I at? I was so dumb as a kid. This is a real thing. We had the vinyl of the yeah. soundtrack for Top Gun. I thought that uh, Tom Cruise sang all the songs because he was the star <laughs> of the movie. 
<laughs> and I guess I thought the lady saying "Take my breath away" is like okay, she's the oh, least that would be, Berlin, of course. That'd be great. That's how the that's how things work. That, I mean, sometimes it is how they work. Depends on you know Greece. Yeah, there you go. You know what I know. I actually watched Greece with my family recently. I hadn't seen it in a long time. I was never as high on Greece as some of the other members of my, uh, like my brother and stuff. But we went on a cruise and they had a Greece, like Broadway thing. And it was fantastic. And the kids loved it. But uh, what is it? Zuko or whatever. Johnny Zuko. <laughs> fuck his character name is. I was just like, this, this is no Travolta. Kids, you can't like him. You don't know. You don't know what you're missing. This is no Travolta. And so we came home and watched it. And yeah, Grease is awesome. That movie holds up really well. I liked it a lot. How'd you like that walk? Okay, Kyle Nelson for a 199 Super Chat. Do you like the 1997 Steel movie with Shaq? Well, who doesn't? It's a it's a timeless classic. It's right up there with uh, what Kazam or Shazam, whatever is other. <laughs> what, what is the genie one? Kazam? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, no, yeah. Shaq, is, Shaq is terrible. It's so bad. Yeah. Um, so I watched it for the first time. Um, Why? Well, I guess, so when The Suicide Squad, because I'm the ranking guy. Oh. So I try to do my epic rankings. So the hell when, were, what were you, I'm sorry, what were you ranking that had Shaq? All, what, because Steel is a DC property. So it's all DC movies. So Yeah, were they trying to base that off of like Man of Steel? Was that some sort of a weird spinoff they were doing? Or is he so, an actual character? Uh, so uh, it's John Henry Steel. Uh, when Superman died, mm -hmm. they did the reign of the Superman. And so then there were kind of these four Supermen and one of them's like a clone. One's a cyborg. And one of them, John Henry Irons, steel. I remember so that. The guy that and makes this big metal. He sledgehammer. Metal and, sledgehammer. Yeah. He looked a lot and, cooler in the comics. Yeah. And then they did um, on Superman and Lois, the, the CW show. Uh, he's on there and he's basically Iron Man with a hammer. And he's pretty cool. Yeah. Shaq, however, probably not the right guy to to star. As remember a, the video game Shaq Fu? Oh, I remember. I remember. Uh, I watched yeah. the Hot Ones with Shaq because there's a meme of him making funny faces, and my well, my kids are like the kids they yeah. love memes. So then yeah. we watched it, and then we were like, "Let's do the history of Shaq." Here's Shaq Fu, and we yeah, we went through the whole history of his his it's rap a, career, his video a, games, all of it. It's very amazing kind of life that he's lived and a yeah. lot of really everything he puts his name on is kind of a seal of perfection. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's going to run for um, like the sheriff of a city. He's planning on doing that in 2024. Does he own the city that he's running for? He's like a volunteer officer or something like that in the city. And he wants to run for office, but he was too busy back four or five years ago to do it in 2020. So he's the, like, that's the thing. He's like this guy that, yeah, he's, you know, basketball player, rapper, mm -hmm. video game, uh, entrepreneur. Sports commentator, entrepreneur. Uh, he sells like um, human growth hormone oh, supplements yeah. or something like that. He shows up in my feed all the time. Like here, I take this and I got great ho growth hormone levels. <laughs> because you, and now you Google all this Shaq shit. So now he's like, he's like in your purview <laughs> constantly. Just, just trying to figure out how you go down these rabbit holes of stuff. Like what, how did I start getting that many Shaq ads <laughs> of with his shirt so off? Like, does bills. not compute, does not compute. They start throwing you George Foreman grill stuff and they, they don't even know how to make you out anymore. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's that's amazing. Okay, Master Sergeant with a five dollar super chat. Sup. One number one, Snyder trilogy. Number two, Wonder Woman. Number three, Guns the Suicide Squad. The rest are one offs and tied at thirteen. <laughs> Yeah, Ma uh, Master Sergeant, actually, he, he's a Patreon that's having me do the roast of, I believe, Justice League. And that is a beautiful script that I put together. Uh, it, it took me an hour and a half to record it. The editing is going to be very fun on that. I look forward to that. I'm glad I have a full-time job and decided that roasting <laughs> movies is, is what I should be doing with my free time. Okay, uh, thank you, Master Sergeant. One final super chat, Kyle Nelson again. <laughs> Shout out of a cannon. Why are critics so sensitive about CGI? 
So I think, I don't know if it's the critics so much as the internet. And I think it's the, I would guess that it's probably the under 30 crowd that have been raised on like modern day TV shows. Yeah. Uh, you Like you have like Secret Invasion, six episodes, $200 million budget. And so you, you kind of get raised so much on just expecting CGI to be crazy good. Um, and I think some, like there's no excuse mm-hmm. for a movie with a budget of $200 million to have a the CGI that's that bad. And I yeah. think some of it is also um, when you just, it feels like it's getting worse and it should oh, it, be. Like, it is absolutely getting worse. Uh, you look at even those early... The first Transformers movie. Oh, that's that classic example. Yeah. yeah. That's what it, I was about it, to say. Pirates Dread- of the Caribbean. I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean has freaking top tier CG. Mm-hmm. That Davy 20 Jones, years ago. Yeah. yeah. Davy Jones looks insane. Uh, and I think it's a lot. A lot of it has to do with, obviously, the overtaxing of these mm-hmm. studios. Uh, another thing is the over-reliance on CG mm-hmm. now. They're pushing out what? five times the content that they were yeah. doing, you know, because of all these streaming services that have all these deals. And there's only so many VFX shops out there right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, 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 it just, just surprise. because you have a ton of money mm-hmm. doesn't mean there's more VFX artists and it doesn't mean there's right. more top tier VFX artists. And it doesn't mean that there's enough top tier directors that have that skill set of just knowing how to incorporate these two things and how to respect it. Like, there's a well, and, thousand... and it's supply and demand. So, you know, Weta Studios isn't going to take the first job that falls in their lap at this point. They're going to take the best paying job mm-hmm. that falls in their lap. And, and like, you can criticize a thousand things about Michael Bay, and I have, mm-hmm. and you have. But right. the guy also knows how to, like, shoot certain scenes. And so you watch him blowing up these buildings, and it looks like Shia LaBeouf is in a building that's collapsing and oh, being yeah. eaten by a gigantic robot. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not realistic at all, but it looks grounded in our reality. And then you watch the Marvel movie where Scarlett Johansson is falling out of the sky, and she's sword fighting, and it it does not look grounded in any sort of reality. And well, because think- Yeah, because they've got, again, Michael Bay knows how to shoot action he was doing it before they even had the cg mm-hmm. to work with and so even in the cases where he knows he's going to have fake giant robots he'll still put his actors yep. on a platform that's moving around he'll still mm-hmm. add air to you know like blowing fans on them and often now i mean god thor love and thunder there's scenes where not a single thing is real except for these actors yeah. and even they're not fully real their armor yeah. is fake their helmets are fake Right, their abs yeah. are fake. It, it's just it's so far gone from giving you anything to connect to in a scene. Mm-hmm. That again, that's where the stakes come in. I don't, I don't know what to connect to in this moment because everything is clearly half-assed thrown at me. Mm-hmm. And so and I, get, the, I get it. I get the criticism for sure. Yeah, and, and that's where this comment came out when we were talking about the Flash mm-hmm. and. You know, in our cases, we connected with the story, so we weren't bothered by the superficial stuff. Right. But there's no excuse. There's no, like, $200 million. And it's a movie that they were test screening it a year before it came out. Yeah. And they, it just sucks. Like, they didn't, they clearly didn't have a a, a vision for what they wanted it to look like that was Mm -hmm. a good idea. And right. so then you have the director being like, oh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not supposed to look realistic because it's like this projection of time. It's like, but it's not supposed to look like a PlayStation 2 render. Like, what? <laughs> like that's not what it would look like. This doesn't look like a grounded reality to anything. It feels like unrendered graphics. It really does feel like, especially in the baby scene, that they just that was early pre-res CG that they were going to go back and, and and touch up and clean up. But they're like, oh, God, we've already spent almost $300 million on this film, and we can't put an ounce yeah. more into this thing or we're going to lose money. And I think it often comes down to that, where this shit's just expensive now. The marketing mm-hmm. budgets are through the roof. They have to pay mm-hmm. all these big name actors, a huge chunk of change. The, the, again, these VFX studios aren't free. They're not Mm -hmm. cheap. Even though the workers at the bottom are getting paid pretty little, apparently, I think the guys up top are, are, are kind of cashing in, Mm -hmm. which is, which is too bad. And a lot of last minute reshoots. And every time like Marvel apparently is horrible about 
mm-hmm. constantly reshooting it, constantly changing the script. And so it's this, this isn't this well envisioned thing that they shot based off the original script. It's the thing that they shot a month ago. It's the conveyor belts coming out and making it. Did you see that on the Marvels? Supposedly they already, sp- they spent a, a couple hundred million before they even really started shooting the film is what I read. Because they had so many pre-production issues going through scripts, going through pre-res and all that stuff that it's just, it's ballooned yeah. to a point of uh, absurdity. Yeah. I, I don't, I couldn't even find actual numbers on it. They're for some reason kind of being coy about it. But if those reports are to yeah. be true. Not for some reason, because it's bad. <laughs> like they're, it's probably they're, bad, they're, yeah. in, they're in really bad shape where like an Indiana Jones movie costs $300 oh. million. And what are you two doing? Two and a half hours long. Yeah, like again, what, what are you doing? What is? Why is? Why is any of this? And there's a. <laughs> why is I, any I, of this? <laughs> like the shot at the beginning of the movie where Indiana Jones is like from a distance, they show him running on top of a train. Oh yeah, and it looked horrible. Yeah, it looked like the the rubber band people from Blade Two. It, it was yeah. two sec, like a one second shot. This is a three hundred million dollar movie in the year twenty twenty three. It's a wide shot. It doesn't need to even be detailed. You just need physics that look like a real human, and you screwed that up. I don't. How do you screw I, that up? I don't know. And then, and then they have uh, how do you say his name? Michael Madsen or whatever the 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 bad guy. He gets like freaking decapitated in that same scene on the train. And then he shows up later. It's like a like tiny little nick on his face. It's like you get fucking wasted by that. You fell off the side of a train into a CG waterfall or whatever. Yeah, again, can't can't connect to anything. It's yeah. all so fake. But yeah. the, the point Sean was saying, the Flash looks terrible, but it has enough connective tissue and a good script, yeah. in our opinion, that. You can go along with the right. It's the same reason that people still like Richard Donner's Superman. If you're going to come out and tell me that those effects hold up, you are <laughs> lying. Or the original Star Wars trilogy. Listen, they're they're still okay visually, but dear God, they are a far cry from what Hollywood can put out today. And that first lightsaber battle we're treated to mm-hmm. with Obi-Wan and Darth Vader looks like two guys having a sword fight in a bathroom. <laughs> It's like, uh, uh, uh. he does a little twirl at one point. He's like, oh, uh, how do you like me now? <laughs> what are you doing? But uh, yeah, you, you let that shit go because the story's compelling. The characters are interesting and you're yeah. along for the ride. That, it, it's, it's not complicated. People, yeah, yeah it, it's got to be younger people and they're yeah. going to they're gonna grill it and then they're going to grow up like us and they're going to be like, uh, you kids today don't understand what, you know. But even to an example, you know, we're talking about Black Adam and you're like, this is the most CGI city I've ever seen. Right. Because that's all the movie had to offer. Right. You weren't like, oh, man, the journey of Black Adam and yeah, it the wasn't kid on the skateboard. And so you're you're it's the the movie is delivering spectacle and superficial entertainment. And it's, so if you're only watching for that and you're like, uh, I'm watching a, a city that's not real. Right. <laughs> Then that's and all you see. That, that's that's like how it goes for a lot. I mean, again, back to Snyder, the, the Snyder cut. I, I harped on it a lot. But like I said, the story was a lot better. It was far more fascinating. So, yeah, you can overlook Wonder Woman's theme song playing every time she enters a room or, you know, orders a, a coffee or does whatever she does. That fucking song plays. But... <laughs> The chanting. <laughs> it would have been funny if at one point it was so loud that the characters in the movie were like, D- Diana, can you leave for a second? We're, we're trying to have a conversation. Like they could hear the song themselves. Okay, Kyle, last last second, final four ninety nine super chat. If you didn't know the budget of movies, would your opinion change? Well, no, we're we're just I think we're just chatting about it. Yeah. Like I, I don't I don't care if a movie costs a sticky. I, I'm only you know, we're just kind of candidly talking like it's crazy that it costs so much yeah. and it looks that bad, but that doesn't change my opinion on the final yeah. product. I mean, I think there's, there's, I can't put, say, I value, like, oh, I'm completely objective. I don't put my outside knowledge. I mean, yeah. we're all human. We all kind of things that frustrate us. Like, mm-hmm. even as we talked about Justice League, I can't just evaluate it as like this weird Frankenstein thing. Sure. I evaluate it as I know why it's this weird Frankenstein thing. And I'm like, that's 
that's this is like the worst of Hollywood that which you would right. be opportunistic about that. Come on. Yeah. Um, but um I, I think so it's there's movies where it's tough to not have a certain amount of cynicism when it like you just know Disney is just throwing burn, money baby. out there. Turn and burn, and, baby. And you're just like what is going on here? Like, why? Uh, how does or per, or, per, or purposely um, doing the cash gap grab remake, and then on top of that, doing a a gender swap or a race swap yeah. because they know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to get people talking, get people fueled, going out, and then they're they're playing people against each other with these kind yeah. of stupid tactics. Yes, but like case in point, like I watched Secret Invasion. I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be... No, it's not. Okay, no. it's another one of these meandering things in the middle and then you get to the end and you're like, oh dear, what what were you thinking? I gave up on and, Disney. I gave up on Disney Plus shows. They're so bad every time. And, like, and afterwards, it, we find out it costs $200 million and you're like, this is a show about people like sitting in circles talking and drinking <laughs> coffee and talking and being in a hospital room and talking and being in a in a, a warehouse and talking how are you spending 30 million dollars perhaps so like is amelia clark uh Avelia, olivia coleman samuel l jackson all getting five million dollars per episode yeah, what is going on here there's no ju- there's no explanation until you realize that they they shot it and then they reshot it. And then oh they yeah, shot it. Yep. Um, and- well, yeah, and and because these universes are so big and connected, there's there's so many things like okay, Kevin's coming in now, and he's saying the Eternals two is gonna have this character, so we have to shoehorn it in here now because it's all gonna for some reason still connect, and it's so bloated and large, it's become uninteresting to everyone. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. We could talk so- for hours about this. So I was I was debating on the the Twitter with um someone X, X you mean yeah X, X I was yeah. Xing on X um tonight so right bad. before we started and you know, someone had tweeted out um well Blu Ray Angel tweeted out uh, Secret Wars could be the first movie to make three billion dollars <laughs> and so someone someone I know was like no I it's don't I don't what? see it happening. <laughs> Three billion dollars? What did James? Three. What did Avatar two make? Like one point four or something? No, it, it was over two billion. Oh, was it? Avatar movies make over two billion. Oh, it's, James Cameron is James the, Cameron's magics. Yeah, so but, uh, you go to James Cameron's number, and then you always go backwards from that. Yeah, so nothing's right. making over two billion dollars. Right, right. And so I'm like, there's no, the momentum is disappearing. There's yeah people's interest is dwindling. There's no stars. There's no team ups that pull it together. We don't even know who the Avengers are. Yeah, I don't, there's like Chris Pratt and Ant-Man maybe are in there. And I assume Brie it's, Larson. It's, right. Like it, like the leader is, is Shuri or this she, 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 Aquafina. Is she like, going to be in the mix? Like who is the Avengers? We don't, we're, we're 17 movies and 25 TV shows into the multiverse saga yeah. and the we've had two references to the, or like three references to the Avengers. Spider-Man said, I was an Avenger. And then his buddies went, what's an Avenger? <laughs> Modoc said, I got to die in Avenger. So we oh, know Modoc used what? to be an Avenger. Spider-Man used to be Avenger. And then people in secret invasion were like, Hey, why don't you just call the Avengers to stop this gigantic threat? Mm. And he goes, because this is personal. I got to solve this. Is so this- he doesn't call the Avengers. Like that's, that's a real line of dialogue. Like no superpowers. This is personal. I got to solve this. So is he sends still- it. Is there still so a gem- the- Sorry, go ahead. But so he says he's going to solve it himself. Then he sends in Amelia Clark as him. So she can use her superpowers. So he doesn't even do the thing. It's a total rando character. Oh, it's, it's disaster. Is, is Amelia Clark a good, like a superhero? Is she good or bad? She's uh, so she was with these extremist scrolls, but she's like, hmm, terrorism's bad. Yeah, of course. So yeah. I, I don't, I don't, not fully good, but I think that killing three thousand people for no reason is bad she's an anti-hero okay (laughs) wow all right so then she's kind of like in the middle yeah and then at the end um spoilers for secret invasion they have a super scroll machine where 
Uh, Nick Fury used the scrolls to collect all the blood of the Avengers from the Battle of Endgame. And so then Nick Fury gives the blood of all the Avengers to the bad guy to put into his super scroll machine. And oh so my. then what? This, so, <laughs> this is a real thing. Someone this, did AI write this. <laughs> so he gets the, the, the blood of all the events. Like and Nick Fury has it. He doesn't have to turn it over, but he chooses to. And so he gives it to Amelia Clark who goes as him. And she's pretending to die from radiation because they're like a nuclear plant. And so she hands over this this potion to blood a vial of blood to him that he puts into his super scroll machine. And Nick Fury is sitting in the middle of the machine, and he's like, "I'm just gonna run the machine with you sitting next to me." Oh my and god! And so they run the machine, and then both Amelia Clark, who's a scroll, and our big bad guy, who's a scroll, gain all of the powers <laughs> of everyone. Of everyone. <laughs> That was at the Battle of Endgame. Amazing. And there's like, it's so like she flexes her arm and it I saw that clip. I saw that clip. And so she has Drax's tattoos because she has his powers. And then like at one point they have the rings of one of Thanos' guys. And it's like, wait, those are rings. Rings are not in your blood. What what is happening? Were you counting as things were showing up and you're like, one million (laughs) dollars? $2 $2 million, $3 million, and all the way to 200 it, And so then they do a big boss fight, and then she wins. No and then point, it's point. like a, a random spy person is like, we can work together. You can use me. I'll use you. And that's what oh. they do with this character, that they just like casually and accidentally made the most powerful character in the entire MCU. And they didn't even realize it. They didn't stop to think like, Oh, that has ramifications. This is important. You know, Mother we should... of Dragons. Yeah, the Mother of Dragons is now the most like you don't even know her name. I'm still calling her Amelia Clark. She's Khaleesi, Mother yeah, she's of Mother Khaleesi, of Superheroes. Mother of Dragons, and I don't know her name, but she's the most powerful character in the MCU. And as far as we know, they have no future plans for her. They just like, oh, oops, we accidentally did that. Um. You're you're forgetting one reference, and that is uh, at the f- way end credits of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. They say Star Lord will return in Avengers. They do. Yeah, so there you they go. Do. That's that's the great callback they give there because James Gunn's like, I'm not putting any bullshit in my movie. You can tack it on at the end if you want, but you already screwed me over with Gamora mm-hmm. and with Star Lord's character arc. So yeah, yeah. he's done. Uh, I love that too. He's been kind of snarky about it lately. <laughs> Oh, he had that line in uh, Guardians 3, which I thought was just great, where he's like, yeah. And then they threw her over a cliff, and I, a magic cliff, and I guess she died, but then she came back, and I don't understand any of it. it was, it was pretty good. That's clearly James Gunn, like, passive-aggressively saying, like, yeah, like, fuck you fucking guys. Okay, one final one, last second, Daniel Skinner, $5, thank you, Daniel, says, as someone who met Sean Chandler in real life, who is the most famous person you guys have met? Mine is Haley Steinfeld and Brie Larson. Wow. That's a nice that's a nice matchup right and there. He, I would love he that. did that in San Antonio in July. And I almost would have met Daniel Skinner a second time in San Antonio, but it kind of fell at a, at a busy time, so I couldn't head on out to that Comic Con. Okay. But, yeah. Is that your, who have you met, Sean? Anybody uh, famous? Oh, he's got a photo. My close personal friend of me with my buddy, William Shatner. Um, he just always has plexiglass between the two of us. What a weird guy. So he's, we're Holy crap, he's short. He's sitting down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't <It's>, see. <laughs> was it two in the morning where you're it's at? two in the morning. It's one wow, he's, a, he's a midget. <laughs> Holy shit. How tall are you, Sean? Like 10 feet? <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Well, that's cool. Right, al- right along with that, my other close personal friend, uh, uh, Sam Raimi and oh, uh, awesome. Bruce Campbell. Very nice. They are standing up, They're so this sta- does show down me as, well. yes. as clearly taller than them. Uh, so. which, which gives you dominance over them. Yes. yes. That, that was important to me. <laughs> Very alpha Literally, status. You right walk there. in, walk into this photo op. You know, paid all this money to get my picture with them. Walk in. Sam Raimi walks up to me. Goes, "Hi, my name's Sam." 
Oh my god! <laughs> it literally introduced like, That's yeah, awesome. bro. I just paid. $100. Hi, friend. I'm Sam. <laughs> you may and know the, me from such hit films as Spider Man and Spider Man Two and, and Evil Bruce Dead. C- Bruce Campbell's like, ah, get these losers out of here. There <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm it's like say. both of them played into their exact stereotypes of Sam Raimi being this nerdy, awkward, really nice guy, and Bruce Campbell being this really funny douchebag. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, Bruce Campbell, that'd be he'd be a blast to meet. I uh yeah. Uh I haven't met anybody too exciting. I saw Michael Ro- uh how do you say his last name? Rooker? Roker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that. Yeah, one of them. I, Michael I would Rooker. Bumble, like, Michael Rooker. <laughs> okay, Flavin? Scrim? Uh I saw him at a con, one of the only cons I ever went to, actually. Um, and it wasn't even like a meet and greet thing. He was actually just like walking in from outside. I guess he he missed the the back private entrance. So he just comes rolling in with his leather jacket on and he stops. I'm like, Michael Roker? He turns over, he shakes my hand, says hi. I'm like, I didn't have to pay money for this, you stupid suckers. Uh, I I met like Lou Ferrigno and a couple other people, but I wouldn't say anybody too exciting. I'd love to meet like, uh, I think um, Larry David would be hilarious to meet in person. I think the uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia gang would be freaking awesome. I don't know. I, I like, I like, comedians i think that they are the most honest people in hollywood i think jim carrey would be a blast to meet yeah i i know that's not what the question was but i'm just telling you people i'd love to meet on my bucket list at this point uh yeah okay i think that that's that wraps up the super chats it is two in the morning here Woo. what are you at one over there yeah it's only twelve fifty six. oh here. well it is one fifty six here we are on the same you know we're, we're still my my so wife solid. had been in the chat. I think she she passed out. She, she's gone. Fell asleep. Yeah, she's gone. Yeah, we lost her. My wife didn't even bother. My family is actually not even in the house. I am home alone, Macaulay Culkin style. I oh, wow. set up booby traps everywhere. Yeah, they flew back to Minnesota, and I'm going down there in two days to to see all my family because we moved here to South Carolina. We're from Minnesota. I don't know if you can tell from my rich, thick accent, but um, which city are you in? Right now, or yeah. where was uh, I'm in Somerville? Oh. Do you want me to give me your ad- the address too and everything? Yes, so well, I, so me fully? I, yeah. I went to college in Columbia, so okay. I've only been Columbia. here for a year, but I do know I do know where Columbia is. Yeah, yeah. So I was maybe if you know Columbia, then I could have been like mentioned the two streets that I know in Columbia. <laughs> that's it that's my whole that's, connection that's whole... I, was, I was trying to connect with you on a real personal level yeah, well we got there i think we got there i, think it, I, I think we, also it have been in the state of south carolina there it is i've have been, you been into maurice's barbecue uh no i have not yeah, i haven't been to enough barbecue places here oh. it's kind of what they're known for and i haven't i've, I've barely been to a barbecue yeah. place. coming from texas like i was offended well, at the concept that they were known for barbecue yeah so i never I, went to maurice's yeah. barbecue but they were like famous for being overtly racist so i was actually testing oh. you to see how racist you were <laughs> it all goes back it <laughs> all comes back around i was just trying to get some ammo to post on that's, twitter that's like right. i got him it took three and a half hours and it was two and o'clock in the morning his time and I caught him in one of my it's traps. It's going to be Sean Chandler's clip tomorrow. And yeah. you start doing clips on your channel now. What's up, guys? Sean Chandler. Here's the top five most racist people on YouTube in the movie critic space. And number one, Adam does movies. And he racism. ate at Maurice's Barbecue. <laughs> How would that taste? Finger licking Nazi. <laughs> oh, wait. My wife is actually still here. She just doesn't respond to any of my comments I leave for her. Oh, that's nice. Well, well, it's it's not nice. It met me. She's ignoring me, and it's it's hurting my feelings. I was feeling insecure. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, on that note, Sean, this yes, is a pleasure. insecurity again, again, people. You can you can subscribe to his channel at uh, Sean Talks About. Why is that your handle, by the way? Why aren't you at like Sean Talks Movies or something like that? It's like Sean Talks About Nothing. Yeah, that's the if if you if I'd known that. You can change it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I could, but you, sh- you should. I don't Maybe. like it. I don't, it bothers me that Sean talks. Sean Chandler talks about. Yeah, it's the actual. Mean? That's the name I've always had. My actual name is Sean Chandler talks about, and so it's, <laughs> that's your first, middle, and last name. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Um, it's like literally my thought. 
we went to go see the Lady Ghostbusters yeah. back in July 2016. Oh, I, saw, I, I saw your video on that as a like your walk uh, through your life. Yeah. It was very nice. It's it's so like like next day I was like I'll post a video like what what should I I had this dormant YouTube about. channel that I'd posted some stuff about and I was like yeah you know, you know, I want to talk about Ghostbusters yeah let's call the channel Sean Chandler talks about so each video is like Sean Chandler talks about Ghostbusters Sean Chandler talks about whatever it is yeah it's yeah. just like this stupid thing and then. 80 million views later of people like <laughs> Sean Chandler talks about like it what and then you know even if you say the full version Sean Chandler talks about movies it's still a pretty stupid name and well, then like there's a group of people what like when I go to church on Sunday it's like it's a joke to the high schoolers or it's amusing because I'm a full-time youtuber and so sure. they anytime they see me they're like Look who it is! It's Sean Chandler talks about movies, and like oh, half the, the the high schoolers of the church or teenagers of the church just like put on this big thing, yeah. and they're like, and they're, even if they're close to me and they're not yelling, they'll do the fake yell thing. We're like, look who it is! <laughs> like, do that stuff, and uh, yeah, then they them. they say the whole thing. It's never Sean Chandler. Sean Chandler talks like about. It's, it's, always, yeah. it's always Sean Chandler talks about. But well, they you said movies. They put the movies yes. on too because they, even they're like, "What are you doing?" This is stupid. Yeah, yeah, like, what you, what even you they doing? know better than me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've changed my channel name three times, and I guess we know who's got more subs and views. So the joke, I guess, comes yeah. back to me at the end. Uh, yeah, subscribe to Sean Chandler. Sean, this was a long uh, time. Uh, me. Subscribe oh. to Sean Chandler talks about. <laughs> This is important stuff. You know what's funny is I went to look you up on Letterboxd and there are a couple Sean mm -hmm. Chandlers mm -hmm. that don't have the talks about you know moniker at the end. So I almost followed the wrong one over there. And I, I didn't use it for three years. I just recently got back onto it. So there's all these like fan accounts that are actually posting things that are pretty close to my reviews because they're pulling them from, from my reviews. Mm -hmm. But they're not me. They're me, actually. I'm trying to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Next week, look for Ch Sean's channel rebrand. What's up? It's Sean Talks Movies. On this episode, I'm ranking, a, I'm doing a tier list on movie movie uh, sequels that have bad titling. That, that's how it's going to be. This brought to you by Adam Does Movies. Oh, he must be super successful if he's giving you advice. No. <laughs> he's not. Okay, yep. Yeah, follow Sean Chandler Talks About whatever he wants. Um, Sean, this was a blast. This mm -hmm. honestly was. Uh, I was looking forward to this. And the first time we've ever talked. Yeah. Back to, back to where we started on this. First time we ever talked, and we talked for three and a half hours. Yeah. I really do talk about movies. You do. And I do talk about them way too much. No, I think you, you talked about them a perfect amount of time. I appreciate All right. that. Thank you guys for watching, and Sean, we'll have to do it again sometime. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end the broadcast and we'll awkwardly sit here for a couple seconds while it ends. I don't know what it's doing.